I should really play some music when that's on. <laughs> welcome, guys. Welcome. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, Age of Wonders 4, the, the Primal Fury DLC, plus also um, the uh, the Wolf update, which is actually as good as the Primal Fury DLC. So the Wolf update is free. Um, the um, Primal Fury DLC, of course, adds a lot more other content to the game as well. So I'm going to go through in this particular live stream uh, all the bits and pieces um, all the new stuff, we'll get that out of the way to start with, and then we'll actually just get into some gameplay. You can see I've actually even been setting up a, a uh, character here. This is actually a halfling character, <laughs> set up as a um, as a sort of little forest dweller, which actually works incredibly well. There's so many, they've made so many changes recently uh, into the game. It's um, it's really awesome what they've done, I've got to say. And the DLC is one of their cheaper DLCs in terms of the actual game itself. It's the same price as Dragon Dawn. Dragon Dawn was another great DLC for the game. But Primal Fury is, uh, again, for what it actually brings, is extremely good value, in my opinion, anyway. I think there's so much so much content that actually is actually coming into the game. But also, with the Wolf update, so much balance has now been brought into the game as well. So many major... Uh, gameplay mechanics have changed uh, just with these two updates. Now I'm playing with a, a, a preview version, you can see down in the bottom corner there. This is not the release version, so there may be some changes. We have been told, like we've had this version for maybe two weeks, so I'm guessing there will be some changes for tomorrow's release. So it's, it's releasing in about, um, must be about 16 hours I think, maybe a little bit around there anyway for a time of um, time of live streaming. I was going to say time of recording, but I guess it's it's live streaming time. I hope I am live. Actually, I should just double check that. Um, let's have a quick look. Yes, I am. Good. Okay, that's fine. I did want to go through and actually show the update. I was going to summarize very quickly what the update brings because the update is as exciting as the actual DLC. So the update is for free. You don't have to use the um, the DLC, but you do get actually get the. Um, the update for free. So anyway, uh, you can see there that a lot of these prices, this is Australian prices by the way, so I think it's, I think that this Dragon Dawn is usually about $10 US I think, and um, and then the Empire and Ashes is the more expensive one at, um, at about $20 US. Uh, Primal Fury I believe tomorrow when it does release will be another $10 US one. I can't believe that price to be honest. Uh, with the, with what you get with it, it's um, it's a it's a lot of content, and uh, and then Eldritch Realms will then be one of, supposedly one of the expensive ones, which is coming soon, which um, we assume will be in quarter two, I think, of uh, 2024. Uh, again, can't wait for all these different things to be released for the game. I'm looking forward to seeing where the game does head with this as well. Now. Um, some positives and negatives, I guess, with the DLC. I'll go through. I'll go through. Well, one negative. Only, is there only one negative? There's a few little things that I've, I struggle with with the game, and I hope that they do change it. One of them actually is with the uh, with the um, one of the new aspects, which I will go through all these things uh, in this particular video. So not that it makes a big difference, to be honest, but it's just one of those little. It's just the the lighting in the, in one of the new settings in the game is sort of dulls it right down and I don't know why because um, like I don't know why they went with that because I find that one of the things I love about Age of Wonders is I feel energized when I play it like I don't get fatigued and a lot of a lot of that's to do with the color schemes that they've got they've always had bright colorful games or all of or every single version of Age of Wonders it's been it's just been beautiful ever since the, the first one and this is the first one where there's one setting that you can actually change which then diminishes that. But there's a lot of other things, like so many other positives that have come through. Anyway, let's just get into it. Uh, I did want to show that, and we do actually have the Wolf update. I do want to go through this, actually, because this is incredible. I'm just going to press uh, F11. Make it full screen so we can actually get all of the, uh, all, in all its glory. I'll summarize this one. I did do a live stream earlier today where I, I went through in detail what it actually does have. So we've got a new feature, which is bounties, which is a way that you can then interact with other players on the on the map to um, and to either provide bounties for quests that they can do for you and vice versa, which is interesting. Uh, they've got um, the Pantheon expansion. I'll show you that in, in like where we actually go through through with that one through there. Also, the way the Pantheon works with your units, I'll try to remember to show you that as well. Uh, ascension, so added 26 Ascension traits. One trait can be chosen at the end of the game upon its as Ascensions of a Ruler. The traits, um, again, I don't know what happens um, with the ones that you've already got that have ascended. Um, yeah, so it, it allows, essentially, 
for your character to uh, to take some of what it has acquired with it. If you use that character again, I know that some players like that. I don't really care one way or another, to be honest, the way I play. So um, I'm happy for it to just be whatever it is. Uh, when conquering a realm, you apply transformations, or the, the your applied transformations are, are maintained. The, the ruler will be under the effects of these transformations um, when next played by you or an AI. So that actually also then expands the way that the characters can actually progress through the Pantheon. If you're not aware, the Pantheon is sort of like when you win a, a map, um, your character ascends, and then that character, like essentially the, it'll then just be in that Pantheon list and then can be brought back. I'll show you when we get into the actual game. But this now changes a bit so that you, you actually do get transformations continuing. So they become more powerful, which means if you come up against them, if they're, if they're an, an, an enemy, they may be more powerful than what you'd expect, which is actually pretty cool. So it sort of gives you a bit more randomization with the way the game does actually sort of then structure that, which I, I think is one of the great things that you need to be putting into these sort of games is a, a degree of, um, of unbalance to sort of make it a bit more fun, and that's one way of doing that. Uh, research tomes will also be remembered by the AI so that whatever it's approach you took with a character, if it does play with an AI player directing it, it will remember the tomes that you chose for that particular uh, particular one so it can then follow what the human player does, which again what should make it then play a little bit more a little bit more smart with the way it does actually sort of then go and work. Um, new Pantheon content. Um, so we've got a, a fair few bits of content in through here. And one of the interesting things in through here are the mount visualizations. You can actually now change these and add these into your... Um, and this is actually not, not part of the DLC. This is actually I thought it was part of the DLC, but it's actually part of the wolf update, so free update. So you can actually have them riding stags, zebras, warhounds, tigers, panthers, lions, etc. Which again makes it quite thematic, uh, depending on how, what you're setting up. Uh, add eight new uh, events of, for the uh, Pantheon Godir uh, that can join the player as heroes. So um, you've got yeah, so you've got a few different sorts of things in through there as well. Again, it's pretty cool. Hero recruitment has now been re it's been changed a lot. So we'll see that when we get into the actual game as well. Like it's completely different, and uh, the reason for that is that they found that the more cities you had, the more powerful you were, and the more and and you also. Uh, got the more heroes because each city would bring its own hero in. So it was like a two-pronged power at attachment to your empire by getting more cities. By by changing it so that the heroes were no longer tied to cities at all, it now means that you've essentially got a time frame and you can invest within Imperium to get that faster. So you can actually get the heroes quicker. You know, So you've now got to think even more about what you do with the Imperium. This is a really, really good change. A really good change. Um, so, and also you can't, you can't recruit, like in the previous one, you could actually go beyond your hero cap and just keep on recruiting. You can't anymore. You have to do it this way. Hi, Kurosami. How are you going? So blame your video covering Solium Infernum for getting me addicted. I can't stop playing the game. Isn't it an awesome game? Solium Infernum is such a great, great game. Um, it's, um, I just wish the AI was a little bit better um, and, and that there were difficulty levels. But other than that, it is a, an incredibly good game. It will improve over time as well. So, um, no, I agree with you. Uh, this is a great game as well. <laughs> so, uh, overhaul of necromancy. Now, there's a, a lot of changes with necromancy. It's much, much more in, immersive. Uh, for example, uh, they've changed the... Um, you get less souls per kill now. Uh, and it does so. So when you are building up your army, instead of just building like skeletons, uh, you now actually have racial skeletons. So so it's, it's like essentially it's going to be they're still skeletons, but they're basically based on what you've killed. Uh, and it's really quite interesting because you end up now where you can get like shield units, polearm units, archer units, and battle mages. It was just previously polearm units. So there's been a complete rework of necromancy in the game. Um, and so, yeah, even the post-combat raising of things. Um, so it essentially means that you can also raise during the actual combat itself. So I, I can't wait to play as a necromancer again. It's been a long time since I've done that. Also, when killing non-racial units, you end up with uh, bone horrors or bone dragons, depending on, on how big the unit is that you kill. And so when you actually do kill like the, the you know, one, two, uh, like basically tiers one and two units in particular, these can then be raised up from whatever they were into skeletons of, of a different sort of type, which is actually, again, pretty cool the way that one does work. They've updated all of the uh, different tomes of necromancy um, back in through there as well. This is a tome of souls as well. There's a lot of changes. 
um, in through here as well, all the way through. There's other changes I've noticed through the game as well, but there's um, just an awful lot. It's very, very good what they've done. Quality of life updates. They've um, added uh, random uh, realm uh, trait randomization. I'll show you that when we get in there as well. I'll try to remember all the things I've got to show you. <laughs> added new free city upgrades as well. Um, added uh, just uh, this one's uh, free cities will now start making use of tome units in the late game instead of only culture units. These tome units will also be available to the ma city's masters by the Rally of Legions. That's actually pretty cool. That allows you to then get sort of purpose built units, which is actually fairly cool. Um, at a dismantled province operation. This means you're going to be able to swap your provinces. Again, something that people wanted right from the, right from the launch of the game. Um, and they were resistant to doing it, but I'm glad that they've actually relented on that one because it does mean that you're going to be able to micromanage what you get from your provinces. And I think that's a really, really good idea. Uh, so I'm glad that they've done that. I'm, su I'm sort of surprised. I wasn't expecting to see that one in there. Added enchantment and visual uh, and transformation visual toggle. This for me is probably one of the biggest things. I actually don't like the visual toggles. So the, sorry, the visual of when it, when something upgrades, I find it too strong. So I'll be turning that off. Like when we do get an upgrade, I'll be just I won't just I won't be applying the transformations. Some of them you have to do, like um, for technical reasons, transformations that gives you wings, like angel eyes or demon kin, or replace your legs. The new Naga transformation, which comes in the DLC, cannot be disabled. Uh, faction creation improvements. So when we've added the option to explicitly specify a name of your faction starting city, as well as re I don't remember where I saw that. If I've seen that, actually, I'll have to have a look. So you can make a make a faction more your own. Also, to reduce some confusion, it's now possible to override an existing faction when you edit it. Previously, you had to, the option to save your existing faction as a new one. So that was the only thing you could do. Uh, so, and I've, again, I was doing that I've, I've had the game for about two weeks and I've just been playing it every so often. I haven't been playing deep into the game, but I've been noticing these things without... I've been noticing them subconsciously without actually consciously putting it together that it's different. Um, it just seems so natural. <laughs> it's funny because I do remember when I was I was editing certain things and thinking, oh, previously I'd end up with two of those, you know, like it would, but no longer does that, which is good. Uh, AI up... Uh, sorry, user interface updates. Um, so we've got a realm overview. We'll have, to, we'll have to try to find these things when we get in there. So you can see the traits and settings your realm has has active. Uh, combat overview as well. So we'll, we'll find these things as we get in there. Combat history, updated special province improvements, UI flow to, to be easier to use, and um, added uh, brand new parchment images just because they look cool. There we go. <laughs> and so that's basically... Um, that's just the summary of it. So it's a massive update. It's as big as the DLC. That's why I thought I'd actually start off with that. And then we'll get into the DLC, because you can see the DLC, but you don't really get to see this until you're actually playing the game. So, um, yeah, so we've got... Um, yeah, Korosami's saying, I'm using the single player. This is on Solium Infernum to train me up for the multiplayer. Yeah, no, it's that's a good way to do it. it I mean, the single player, the AI in Solium Infernum is weak, I've got to say. Uh, hopefully they will improve that. Uh, looks like a great update. Already great game. Yes, it is. And this is actually now, it's really getting fleshed out. Like it's one of these, it's, there's a few games where people didn't really warm to it. And this is one of them. Like there's a lot of people have actually bought the game and haven't really come back to it. So I sort of am hoping that this will, um, that these updates will make it more palatable for people in that category. I'm not in that category, but anyway, that's, <coughs> that's what we've got. Um, yeah, so then this is the, uh, the new updates that are coming. As well, let's just get into the actual game. I think so. We'll just press F11, go back in there. So let's go and start. Uh, we'll start off with my Pantheon and just go through the changes that have come. Uh, so if we go into the rewards, I have actually selected a few rewards just so we can sort of pick them and have a bit of a look. So um, the main addition is down through here, this little area, and so this is not to do with the DLC. I thought it was, but it's actually not. This is to do with the Wolf update. So you've got like a different way of playing, the Druidic Terraformers. And what this one does, it still ties in with the uh, DLC to a large extent. So, um, because it sort of, it, it makes more sense with it. And so in this case, caretakers of the natural order maintaining a carefully tended biome. So cities gain extra food uh, if the city core a province contains grasslands or fungus fields. Uh, more production if it's, if it's forest, rocky or mountain. Uh, gold if the city core contains ashlands and mana if the if the city core contains snow ice or sand uh, so terraforming spells cost minus 25 percent less mana and uh, the world map ca casting uh, sorry and also the world map casting points to cast and minus 20 percent unit upkeep for elemental units and you start with an elemental unit when you do start off with these druidic ter terraformers so this has now been added in 
Plus you've got all these different mounts. Now I did unlock these, uh, I really like the stag mount, I really like that a lot. Uh, but we also then have, um, which I haven't done yet, the lion. I like the idea of the panther. So I've got five rewards I can go and spend. I'll just go and spend a couple. I'll spend one there. Uh, what else have we got that through there? This is Primal Marauder's banner icon. I don't know what that's supposed to be. I think there is something under there. Just can't really sort of see it. These are more, nothing much is really going to happen through here. Over through here, these are more unlocks that you're then going to get um, for the item forge. The Root Lance. Uh, what else have we got there? Dark Eye Shield. I'll just grab one of those as well. That gives me the three. So I've got three there that I can go and pick. What's that one there? The Mirror Shield. I'll leave it there. Anyway, that's all we ha actually have. IZXM saying go, going to be goats. I don't know, actually. I really don't know. Um, Viren Games is saying, hey, Daz, I hope you're well. Uh, can you play tall in Age of Wonders 4, like One City or something similar? Yes, you can. There is actually a way of playing it, which is... Where is it? Uh, Talented Collectors. I think it's in here somewhere. Where it sort of promotes it where... Uh, I've just got to find it. It's not it there. Maybe it's further up or further down. I can't remember where it... Actually, there it is. Chosen Destroyers. This one here is... Um, so, they're warmongers and destroyers choosing violence over diplomacy any time they can. So, raising cities grants a permanent... So, you don't you don't keep the cities. I uh, cannot obtain new cities and conquered cities can only be raised. So, there we go. Uh, suffer minus 300 relations with all free cities and minus 300 empire relations. And you also become the evil alignment. So, this is all about destroying cities. It's a permanent increase, by the way, as well. So it's it, it, like when you when you when you destroy cities, uh, you're essentially getting um, income and permanent income from doing that one. And so this this particular way of playing, again, you have to unlock it to get it. But it's um, that is uh, yeah, that's a pretty amazing one. It's a very difficult one to play. Also, now the, with, with the changes that they've now made in the Wolf update, which, which is a free update that's coming out with this one, which I just said before, um, you, the, the heroes are no longer tied to the um, to the to the cities. The, the, so the number of cities you have has no bearing at all anymore on the number of heroes that you have. And so when you're playing something like the Chosen Destroyers, it's actually easier now because they're separate. So um, so that's pretty cool. Um, so. Um, you're going to think, oh, that's very nice. Not a lot of games do that. Yeah, no, this is um, it's 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 pretty cool playing. I do enjoy playing as these. Actually, these are good fun. Uh, it's hard, but it is fun. But it's now easier because you're not being slowed down uh, for your um, uh, you know for your heroes. So uh, you, you're still going to have this. You're still going to have hero progression, which is fantastic. So it sort of it doesn't it doesn't nerf that because that was one of the things that they had noticed was that. You know, in reality, all you needed to do was just keep on going with the, um, uh, you know, you basically accept the, um, like, it's, the more cities you could get, the easier the game was. And it's still the case, but now heroes are separate. So, um, anyway, let's uh, just go back. So that's the changes in the Pantheon. I will make this a fairly thorough uh, look through at, at everything. Um, you can edit your Pantheon name, of course, as well, if you're wanting to do that one. Um, I'll just go and press Escape with that one. I am playing with some mods, but I, you don't load them in here. You load them in with the load screen, so I won't go through that one. I've just got a few cosmetic mods, not too many, not nothing too much, nothing that's going to play uh, like actually change the base game. So, um, we'll just go to new game. If I actually, if, if I got continue, I'll just see if I've got one. I might just destroy what I've got. Yeah, I was just showing this off before, and I'm just going to go and quit out of this one. So I'm just going to, uh, I'll just surrender. So I was just starting the game up to sort of show what's going on. And I did play as the halflings, there we go. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, just look undone. I've been just deleting, I've been trying to keep, keep my little area fairly clean. Um, yeah, so we don't get any points because it was literally just turn one. If I go to load game, I can then just get rid of these. So I'll just delete the session. Keep, I've been trying to keep it clean in through here. By the way, if, if you are watching this and you've got a fair few uh, games that you're never going to finish off and you've, but you've actually got any sort of progression at all, don't delete the session, open them up and, and surrender. 
That way you get Pantheon points. We don't, if, you, if it's too early, you don't get them, but other than that, you can get just pick up Pantheon points. Uh, that way, because you, I picked up 12, like just because of my the screens, the ones that I had had saved before. Anyway, let's uh, go back out. We'll close that one, um, and we'll just go to new game. So we'll just get started. So we've gone through the Pantheon changes. When we go to new game, we'll go through the bits and pieces here, and uh, we will end up making our own map. And we'll probably make it based on a little bit on what they've got through here. So you can see through here we've got um, various. These are the official maps, and anything with PF means that it's the new, uh, the new, the new area essentially that's coming in. So this is um, uh, Storm Wreath, the Storm Wreathed Isles, and so this has actually got a lot of things like it's got islands, which was there before. Primal Dispute is a new one. In fact, what we'll do is let's just go back in and edit it, and we can have a bit of a look and sort of see what we what we end up getting. Um, now, there's other things. Here. Do we going to? If we just do custom realm to start with, uh, one thing you can do is you can go to customize realm. I'll just show you this, and then we'll go back, and then sort of do it. This has now been added in. You can now randomize all the traits in here. You don't know what you're going to get. So, bang! There we go. <laughs> so, so we don't know what that's going to be. This is really cool though, because you don't you don't actually you know particularly if you don't really have a good look at it before you get started, uh, it it's leads itself to quite weird and wonderful ways of playing. I wish it would come up with a random name. That would be that would be good if it did that, rather than just custom realm. Um, that would be actually awesome if it did something in there. Um, uh, Triumph, if you're watching this one, that's, uh, that's another one. <laughs> um, so the hero classes mod is fantastic. I can't play that one at the moment because of the changes. Um, it's going to interfere with the game. So I I've, um, haven't got any of those sort of mods. I agree with you, but it's not not uh, not for this not for this version of the game at this stage. So they're going to have to make a they're going to have to upgrade it. Uh, anyway, you can randomise that to get sort of like different sorts of starts. Anyway, we won't do that, but that's something you can now go and do. I'll try to remember to try, I'll try to cover all of the things that you can now change. Um, so if we go into into where is it? It's funny. Let's put it way down the bottom here. Uh, we just go and edit this. Now, um, rather than randomise, uh, which sort of keep it there, let's just go through the changes. There's one, there's one thing in here that I really, really dislike, and this is actually the colorization of using hostile seeds, which is new in the game. This is, a, uh, this is one of the Primal Fury um, changes to the map making. So sea storms are a permanent feature of the world's seas, making them exceptionally dangerous. Ocean provinces are affected by sea storms. Combat in these provinces is affected by a sea storm as well, which essentially is, um, this is gonna be all units gain wet for three turns. Up to three random units sustain 10 lightning damage, have a base 90% chance of suffering electrified for three turns. So it's it's a dangerous one. I wish we could play with this one, but just the, the colors on the map are so dull with this in the actual game itself. At this stage, I wouldn't recommend it because it, it makes the game really, really dull. Uh, and I just wish that they, I wish there was a, like I'm sure someone will mod it so that it doesn't actually have that at some point because it really is off putting the way it's been done. Uh, so, units in these, uh, in these provinces suffer in hostile seas minus six hit points uh, each turn. So, this, sorry, this is, um, so this unit is in a, in a sea storm and subject to the following. So, this unit cannot regenerate minus six hit points per, per turn. This unit suffers minus three vision vision range. This unit gains universal camouflage. So quite dangerous in the seas. Again, I would love this to be playable. It's just not with the color scheme, and I don't think they're going to change it. Um, God, I hope it's I hope it's exposed somehow so it can be modded. Uh, I did actually mention it before before, but I was I didn't realize it was actually just this one setting that was the problem. I thought it was other other changes. They've certainly changed other things as well. They've made it more autumn colours, and they said they were going to do that. They were going to essentially go through and try to capture each each season with the, with different aspects of the game. And this is the, I think this is the autumn one. Um, yeah, mutually exclusive with a few of the other different sorts of set starts as well. But anyway, hostile seas is a problem, so we're going to turn that one off. Um, and do we want to replace it with anything? Um, Let's make it, let's get uh, free cities are rare and ru city ruins are common. Let's just do that. So we'll just replace it with that one. That way, at least we get the nice colors. So um, now we've got the, uh, we're going to be playing with the Silver of the Islands. We're going to have the uh, overgrown realm. So a realm where plant life flourishes nearly everywhere. So foreign provi forest province features are common. Desert and Arctic provinces are rare and desolate provinces are absent. 
so we're not going to get there desolate. Uh, peaceful lands, this, uh, this realm features mostly benevolent spirits and creatures, uh, so that's fey, plant and animal units are common. Uh, in this case we also then have, this is another Primal Fury edition, which is actually pretty cool. So this uh, realm is the stage of a violent dispute between the Godia Serena and Nimue, whose primal fo followers follow a bloody conflict. So we've got uh, Nimue is actually a goatkin, which is one of the, we'll see that in just a minute. Um, is uh, The race is Stormborn, is what it's been called. It's a goatkin, herbivore, hardy and tough, which is the basics of the goatkin. Uh, it's a pri its primal power is Stormcrow, which we'll just, uh, talk about. And the other settings they've got is experienced seafarers and adept settlers. And they've got a, their AI person is as a protective sage. Uh, and then Serena, so this one is, uh, is essentially like a pan or panic type unit. Uh, Serena is, uh, is elves. So elfkin, arcane focus, keen sighted, sharp eyes. Sylvan wolf is their primal, so this is still a primal culture. Uh, fabled hunters and hermit kingdom. And they're also protective sage as well. And so we've got the two different ones that are actually so they fight a bloody conflict. Uh, they start at war with each other. Uh, and so these are where if we play the game, this one actually defaults to one player, which I didn't realize at the start, but that was by design. Every other start has got like seven, I think, as a default. But this one's just a one versus the other two. So I'm not sure exactly sure how we then do that one, but I'm, I'm thinking we just go with the flow. So I'm sort of happy to just play that one. Um, so we'll just call it the uh, the not so tempest fight isles. <laughs> It'll do us because this is not uh, we're not going to we're not playing with what we had. We may also we've got uh, low population, so free cities are rare there again, rare there again as well. Uh, we can do uh, the. Um, one where we actually where they keep on coming back. Yeah, re regen. Let's do regenerating infestations. Let's go and add that one into the mix as well. That way, it's just going to be a little bit more dangerous. Hugh David saying, I agree. The color scheme with hostile seas is too dull. I've always liked the colorful and vibrant palette. I have too. I've, I when I when I started testing it, I really hated what I saw. Uh, because it was so different to what I'm used to with Age of Wonders, I just and I really love the energy that Age of Wonders has in its color scheme, but not with this, not with the hostile seas. Without it, it's fine. It's sort of back to what it was. Even with there's still autumn colors in certain things, but not it's not an overall dullness that it is with hostile seas. Anyway, we'll just go with that one. Uh, there are advanced settings, but let's just leave that one where that is. We'll just go next. So that will be what we end up playing. Um, let me know, sing out if there's anything you want to be looking at. I'll just play on, I'll play on hard. It is hard actually, I've got to say. It's, it is, it feels harder than what it was. Uh, Trip the Snake is saying, hey, I think I'm even more excited about the patch than the deer. <laughs> I know, I know that the, um, the wolf patch is, that's why I wanted to start off with that because it's incredible what it brings. And it's sort of, it's one of these things, I'm actually itching to not have to play the Primal Fury content because the other content, playing a necromancer, would be so cool in this game. Um, like it really is amazing what you, what you can actually go and do. Uh, so if we just go next, I mean we could still do that if we wanted to. Um, all right, so this is now new. We've got our pantheons, the ones that we've actually had where we've actually won the won the games uh, in through this other side, um, sitting back over through here but that um, uh, that you can now bring back in, and they. I don't know if these will remember uh, what you had set up before, but they are there now in their own separate area of, of the Pantheon. And so these are ultimately will be level ups as you start to bring them in. I don't know if it will if it will remember anything from these because it was before this particular update. I don't think it will actually. But the new ones from this point forward will actually end up being... Um, actually, can we edit it? Let's just have a look and see what happens. Oh. Is your people's form? Yes, we don't, see, not all trait points have been spent. So we need to, like, we need to fix these up. Um, Your journey essentially because they, they were set up with a completely different, um, like in a completely different version of the game. The game is, is, has evolved so much. The same thing, when I first played Age, uh, Age of Empires 4, it didn't click and I put it away. I got back to it a few weeks ago and it grew on me so much that you now one of my favourite 4Xs. You mean Age of Empires or Age of Wonders? Because I don't think... Is there an Age of Empires 4? I don't think there was. 
thought it was only two, maybe three. <laughs> maybe you mean wonders. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it really has imp it's improved before this update as well, by the way. But the update really does flesh things out again, just incredibly. They've done such a good job of the development of this game, I've got to say. Like, it's just, it's such a polished game. Uh, anyway, we go to custom. We've got other ones we haven't finished things off with, so I've got a lot in here, including some of the new ones. I've been sort of just tweaking things. I might ditch some of these, and then we'll sort of start with, I might just go back to the one that I created before. Actually, yeah, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll keep this one. Um, did I do the same? I'll just check and see the other one that I've got. Um, I did create these wild heartlings, which I really quite like the look of. These are, um, you know, you've got the little horns and stuff. They've got the uh, stag uh, riders, um, which is pretty cool. This one here is, yeah, I've got one of these. I, I, might, um, I might ditch the other one, and then we'll just start again, because, um, uh, yeah, I'll ditch this one here. I'll just go and delete it. I just don't want to have too much of one type coming randomly. All right, so let's go and uh, create a faction. What is your now, the, um, I'll go through even the changes that have come you know, over the last few months as well. So the new ones we have, the new chassis, the new physical forms, we have a goatkin back through here and looping with like the wolf, the wolf style. These wolf ones look more fox to wolf than wolf to me. Um, and, and I'm sort of like these, these sort of make sense, but not for the primal fury aspect. I can see these working very, very well as um, like in a completely different form, like, you know, because they've actually got, there's new traits as well that have come in with each of these. So let's go and start with Goatkin. Maybe then we'll talk about Lupine and then we'll go back the other way. So the new traits that we've got for Goatkin are the uh, herbivore. So units can convert, c consume plants in order to heal and strengthen themselves. And so you gain the consume flora ability. Now this comes in the free update, I believe. I don't think this is part of just the DLC, but this one allows them to heal on the go, which is actually pretty cool. They also have got uh, hardy, so they've got plus eight hit points. And they also have uh, tough, plus two defenses. So they're quite, they're quite a strong unit if you go with the full on goats, but you don't have to do that. You can actually chop and change this. And in the lupine form, uh, we end up with uh, a couple of new ones, Athletics. So this costs three points. So units normally only have 32 movement, but these have 40. And so this allows you to accelerate across the map. It sort of would work very, very well with the feline group as well. In fact, probably even more so with feline than with the wolf. Uh, and then you've also then got your uh, pack tactics as well through here. So deal more damage to enemies surrounded by your units. Uh, and so the, again, it really does reward play not so much using the the primal fury or the primal culture but more back with the old barbarian type, type, uh, type of culture would actually work very very well with this particular group so um, so that's why I'm thinking I won't play as the as the lupine at the stage I'm looking forward to doing that one other other little changes that have sort of come through I mean there's nothing like I mean everyone's traits have been tweaked with a point system now which is actually really quite cool they've got their defaults the AI now will will not just pick these these traits, they've actually got like a, a collection of, of compatible traits and so you don't know exactly what you're going to get when you do go up against the AI. It will be a little bit different, you can play with a completely randomised game. It's not wildly random, it just means that they've just got a few other things to pick from. So for example, if we were going to be choosing um, uh, feline, as I said before, feline have got a few different traits we may want to switch, switch out. So they've got, um, they've got desert adaptation. Um, which we decide, oh, you know, let's not worry about that one. Uh, they're also got elusive, so they gain plus four defense and resistance against retaliation attacks and opportunity attacks. And they also have um, athletics. Actually, that has changed. Maybe that was there before. Because I was thinking that that's probably what you really want to be putting in there. Pack, yeah, maybe, and pack hunting doesn't really matter for them. Okay, look, I'll take that back. I, I thought that that had actually could just come in this, uh, right now. But certainly pack hunter is new. So if we go across and um, we'll just go back to Lupine and have a bit of a look. So it's now a, uh, like this, yeah, these are two points. If I go and get pack hunt, so pack hunting is something that is coming for the Lupine uh, faction, but you can still use them for other things. Like that still probably be good for, even for goblins or, uh, you know, ratkins. Um, what else would, be, would that be good for? Yeah, there's a, I mean, there's a few things, even human barbarians, whatever you might want to do. It's actually interesting. You've got five points to spend. And so, again, if you're going to deck these guys out, you'd want to be decking them out in a way that makes sense. 
the Gutkin though is um, I think we'll play with these 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 are much more aligned with the Primal Fury DLC pack but maybe we'll try to play something a little bit different um, yeah Agent Wonders there we go <laughs> it happens a lot actually it's sort of funny but um, I saw that you did AOW before so I thought I think you did or oh, maybe you didn't yeah no it's okay <laughs> but a lot of people do it just out of habit I think all right let's go and um let's go and change these up so maybe they're not quite as strong what else could we what else could we do um do we make little do we make them little goat people that, that ride stags uh so if we go and, um yeah one of the actually maybe i'll just show you this the process and we'll just restart like if i just leave this as the, the default so just cancel that for a second and just go select now when we come through we've got primal in through here sorry there's dogs barking outside can't see any movement i think i'm okay um okay primal is the new one that we end up having in through here and what's interesting about this one you start off with one nature as your default and then you get to add in something else and so depending on what sort of style of play you want to have it's more comes down to the uh to the type of terrain that you're looking for and so this is for swamps. So, so my crocodile is a swamp one, which gives you extra nature. The storm crow is for grasslands. The glacial mammoth is for Arctic. The, the ash saber tooth is for ashlands. The dune serpent is for desert. The tunneling spider is for underground. You start off in the underground, but if you do choose that one there, and you've got the sylvan wolf as well, which is for forest. So, each terrain type has got its own. Uh, its own spirit animal, its own primal animal. And so it's important to choose and marry up with what you want. And so for us, for example, if we wanted to be playing in the forest, which I think would probably be more thematic at this stage, we probably would go with Sylvan Wolf rather than Swamp. Because I, I don't think, I think that, that would make more sense with these sort of goat creatures or, or the storm crows and go with the, uh, with the grasslands, one of the two. So um, yeah, Fretman Snake saying, I went back to Planetfall recently and it's really good. Modding the units is actually a big plus relative to this one. Yes, I agree. I think that it would it would be it would make it more special to be able to have modded units. I, I, I did like that. I don't know why they didn't bring that one across. That is, um, yeah, that's a bit of an un, unusual one. But with the uh, with the wolf creatures, I mean, it's, it's certainly I think barbarian would sort of then work very very well for them. Anyway, let's just go and close that one. Um, so we'll just we'll leave it with that one so we've got sylvan wolf so we're getting a bit of order a little bit of uh, a little bit of nature uh with with our start in through here let's go select um now again there's a lot you can unlock in through here now there's a, there's so many different ways you can do it like chosen destroyers uh racing cities grants a permanent one we could play that one um actually not really i don't think it's really going to be all that good for us i think we'll go with um I'll do the Druidic ter ter Terraformers. So let's go with that one so we can get Elementals. And let's go with... Um, we've got Mana Addicts. They've embraced to a magic to a degree if you can match. Gaining more than most from its prowess. They become uh, dependent on, on, on its marvels in return. So all units gain attunement, Mana Addicted. And then the Racial Battle uh, Mage Units and Support Units have plus one rank. Start with an extra Battle Mage Unit or Support Unit. Now going with this way, this is going to give us a really powerful start. It just means we have... The, the mana addicted is a bit of a problem. I'll just see if I can squeeze it out there. Come on, come on, come on. So when, it, when a uh, friendly combat spell is cast, this unit gains life steal for one turn. Uh, when unit suffers minus five morale, sorry, this unit suffers minus five morale at the end of its turn if no combat spell was cast this turn. So we have to be careful and we have to make sure that we start casting a lot of spells. Um, so that's an interesting one. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword, that one. Um, it really does mean that we have to we have to be casting spells every single combat round, really. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit of a problem. Uh, other ones we've got: experienced seafarers. Um, yeah, we won't worry about that one. Fabled hunters. We, the only one we have is a blowpipe. That's the only range unit we end up getting with this. Uh, the talented collectors. What does that one do? That's about rare materials and spend large parts of their lives collecting and studying them. So cities gain extra gold, mana, knowledge, food, production and draft for each magic material in their domain. Start with the magic material nearby. That wouldn't be bad. Sort of give us a focus. Maybe that one would sort of work thematically as well. 
So we've got the theme with both of these. So let's go with that. Um, we won't spend too much time sort of setting this one up. So that's now the setup in through that one. Choose your first tome now, there are a couple of extra tomes, but they're not on this level. So we, don't, we, we only see old tomes in through here. Now we've got Evolution. This one gives us sort of draconic vitality and things like this, which we don't really need. I, want to play, I do want to play in the theme. Let's go with uh, the Tome of Roots at this stage. So poison arrows or poison, uh, you know, poison blow darts essentially would make sense. Blight bro yeah, let's go with this way. This one sort of, uh, this one does look thematically with the way that we would go. So we'll just go and select that one. And we'll choose a champion, the goat champion. Reveal yourself. Uh, so Raven kind of saying, if you had to recommend Age of Wonders 4 Vanilla and the new Masters of Magic, which would you say is better? This is certainly more polished. Uh, so just to try to put it into, into context, this is more polished. This has um, got a better tactical battle system, much, much better. Like it's one of the best tactical battle systems in, of any game ever made, I believe, like in, in, my, in my opinion. So I love, the, I love what it does. Uh, but um, it's um, the actual, like it does have that one dimensional feel about the actual factions, even though there's so much you can do to personalize it. It feels funny saying that, uh, because it, it, but it does fall a little flat in terms of um, of the actual factions feeling special. They do, they are special, but not as not as special as they are, for example, in Master of Magic. In Master of Magic, they're both both games have got incredible replay value. Master of Magic does take a lot longer though to master. Like it actually is something that's quite difficult. Um, each faction, you, each each uh, faction in the game, each race in the game does require not like you do need to work your way up using them to get a feel for how best you put them together and then also the combination of the wizards the power of the wizards it's a little bit more like master of magic is more more aligned with dominions in that sense like you know how dominions can be wildly different um you choose your faction but then the way you set up your um your pretender god in dominions um is very similar to in master of magic where you've got to set up your your wizard and that you are given starter wizards if you want them, but if you if you make a custom wizard, it's really really quite um, quite interesting the way it sort of does work. It's for me it comes down to what your focus is. Now, I love Age of Wonders. I love Master of Magic as well. But Age of Wonders has been a game that I've played, you know, for like consistently since it first came out back in a, what 1999 or 2000 whenever it was. So it's a game that I've always played. I've never there's never been a time where I've I've stopped playing it. So I've got a, I've got a, I guess a personal love of this game. Um, like my kids grew up with, you know, me playing it. <laughs> I remember they used to sit on my lap when they were little, when I'd be playing it. So it's one of those sorts of games. And so it's one of those things where I've just always, and, and they enjoyed it as well. So it's just, a, it's just got good memories for me, basically. Um, so anyway, that's where we are. Uh, yeah. So that was, um, yeah. So I hope that it's hard, it's hard for me to sort of say which one over the other. I know that people who play Master of Magic will say Master of Magic, people who play Age of Wonders will say Age of Wonders. I don't have the problem that a lot of people have with Age of Wonders with it feeling so flat, uh, but it's uh, but people do feel that. They do feel that it is a, a flat sort of game. Uh, Master of Magic isn't nowhere near as polished though as well, so just be aware of that. But they're both great games. Um, yeah, I think they're both on special at the moment actually as well. I think they are. Uh, so, um, and yeah it's, yeah, it's a hard one, actually. It's a really hard one to say which one's better. It's a, like For me, it's I would choose Age of Wonders for the simple reason that, you know, I've played it consistently for a, a very, very long period of time, and I'm emotionally connected to it in that sort of sense. But I can appreciate the, the, the how great both games actually are. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, hi, Charank, how are you going? Um, so, uh, Kat's saying these look so cool. Yeah, goat, milk and cheese, good too. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, Triple Snake saying Age of Wonder DLCs are so worth it though. Yeah, they are. The the DLCs, for what you get in every single DLC that they've released for the game is unbelievably good. Like there's so much in it um, and they do enhance the game a lot. Uh, like they really are, like, they really are good. 10 bucks, 10 US bucks for this, like, uh, I can't believe it. Like, you know, this is... You know, like it's sort of I mean, everyone sort of worries that we're going to end up with the with the uh, bloat, you know, the DLC bloat that you get from a lot of paradox games. But if they, if that was going to happen, they would have split this into three DLCs, like in, in reality, and they would have been like seven or eight bucks each. 
Um, but if they haven't, they've put it all in one big DLC, which is fantastic. So that's really heartening as well, even when you just think of it in those sort of terms. Like, they could have they could have had the the wolves as different. They could have had the um, the uh, you know the goats as a different one as well. They could have brought in like different ways of changing the world as a, as another DLC if if they were going with that DLC bloat approach. Uh, so it's really really good with what they've done. Like it's actually really impressive. Um, so uh, yeah, so we've got uh, bike racks saying, uh, is there anything that Age Wonder Three still does better than Four? Or outside of the limited number of mods, is four worth the upgrade from three? I think it is. I think it's dramatically better than than three. Um, look, fully modded th version three is still fun to play, but this is I don't know. I find this one's like it's it's just like I think that where another pe where people get actually will find this game fairly hard is in the tactical battles because the tactical battles can be brutal in this game, uh, but if you're used to Age of Wonders three. You're going to be used to the system pretty much, and so there's a few little changes, but overall, it's a, it's a, it's still the same difficult tactical battle system, which is still rewarding to play. You know, so for me, it's uh, it, hands down this is the better version of the game. People have often who are still on the fence about whether Planetfall or this version's better. That's actually often where the argument lies. I still think this is better than Planetfall as well. I, I was also really surprised. Planetfall was the um, was the skunk works to test the different mechanics to see what would happen if you brought them into Age of Wonders 4. So rather than building Age of Wonders 4 and not getting it 100%, they built Planet 4 first to test everything, which I find really, really cool. Right, well, um, <coughs> let's go through. We've only got, like, our mounts are pretty bad uh, with what we actually end up having. We don't have very many with this particular faction. Um, now, one thing I've... There's a few little things that I think that they should change in the game. I keep on giving feedback about it, but no one seems to think it's a good idea. This one, I do believe that the pose of your leader should always start off at uh, number one because it then shows what weaponry they bring in. Um, but they're not going to, I did actually suggest that one, they're not going to change that. So, but I do feel that that would be a much cleaner way for people to actually realize what sort of hero they're going to be getting. Let's go and change, uh, first of all, let's change our race. So we'll just go back into here. So the color schemes that we see with the ruler are, like it does have like a green tinge I think because we've gone primal we don't get to see it as much when we look at this um, let's just go with physique let's make these small so we'll make them very very small uh, arm length small leg length small so these are just gonna be small little goats so we'll make these tiny little creatures <laughs> cute little goats there we go and we'll make them sort of like a uh, brownish sort of color I guess oh, it's orange isn't it Let me go back this way I don't want to make them too dark. Oh, it actually wouldn't matter. I mean, they're forest, they're forest goats. Or do we go white? Actually, the white ones don't look too bad, do they? Really? That looks that looks okay. The army army color. If we just go and um, I don't think we're going to see. We're going to see it in little areas, but not too much. So maybe just really bright yellow or some other sort of goldy sort of color that will work. Um, we don't need to go green as such. I think we'll just go this color. There's more coppery. Let's just go that one. We see it in just little in little areas, not nothing sort of too much. And then the skin decoration, these don't have any, but we can sort of start to then go and place skin decorations on them if we wanted to. Um, I don't know what the other ones have got. Just go back again. Quick look and see what we can end up with. This includes body tattoos and stuff as well. Go back to none. We'll go tattoo free. Okay, army mount types. Now this is again when you got the different unlocks. You can go back to the end. That's a, that's with a panther. Uh, there's the stag. So these are unlocked through the pantheon. Uh, I love the look of this actually. I think I'll just keep this. Um, I really like these a, a hell of a lot. Um, other things I've got is a tiger, the warhound, and then you back to your ponies and stuff like that. So you, your other, you know, the, the previous ones that you had there before, including the crocodiles and stuff. But let's just go with the um, with the stag. I think I really like the look of the stag. But again, I could see the panther being a good one. So these have to be unlocked in their pantheon. Uh, can you make goats ride goats? Um, no, there's no goats in it actually. There are no goats. This is the closest we have. 
<laughs> but I've made them small so that these, like at least writing these things is going to look fairly cool. Uh, now we we'll just go back to the ruler. So if we choose this sort of loadout for the ruler, we end up also with him riding a stag, um, or him or her. I think it's a her actually. Yeah, it's a her. So um, I'll, I'll keep it as a her. Why not? Uh, so we'll just go through. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and get rid of the helmet to start with. The cape I'll start from scratch as well. The outfit, so we'll just keep it default at this at this point in time. Mohawk, we'll come back for that one. I'll just put all, I'll set all these back to zeros. The horns, so we've got different sorts of horns that we can then sort of have with the goatkin. Uh, eye colour, we'll come back and set those as well. Just get them all back down to um, down to level. Go okay, that one, I think. I can sort of zoom in to sort of have a bit of a look and, and see what her head looks like. Yep, that's a good starting starting point, I think. Uh, now we can sort of go back to doing the other stuff. So we'll, go, we'll keep it female, we'll keep it fairly light. Um, I'll just keep it there. Arm length will make short, leg, leg length will make short as well. Just so she's a little bit like the others. Uh, skin colour will make her white as well. All right, skin decoration. Now we might change this one, have a bit of a look and see what we've got. Um, now we're going, we are sort of going to be, did we take mana? We took mana, uh, didn't we? So let's just go this way. Let's make that what she ends up having. So we've got that one and then the, keep the pose where that is for now. Now with the, um, with the various weaponry that she has, uh, we chose the wolf and you can see that we've got wolf fur if we chose something different that would actually be that would also then chop and change as well so you can see the wolf fur on, on both of these <clears throat> as we go back through these we've got the tyrant sword and shield in this case she doesn't get to use a, uh, a mount the um, these are unlocked through the pantheon by the way hand axe and shield we do get to actually that was it there before um, hunter's crossbow crossbow user the um, Berserker Great Axe. This is why I think it should always be uh, default to number pose number one. I don't see any real value in actually going with these other poses, to be honest. Not not at the start, because it, at least you get to see everything. Um, now that's Berserker's Great Axe, the spear. So just basically a spear type unit. I don't know why you bother with that one. Great Axe. Blowgun. So oh, that's interesting. She does get to use the mount with a blowgun, but not with a crossbow. Um, you know, what else we have? Druid staff. This is uh, more thematic, I think, than anything. Than anything really, to be able to use this one. Staff of blight, sap strength. I think that that sort of works. Uh, so we'll probably end up going that way, even though we don't get the mount. The cryomancer staff. This is like a, a frosting staff. Uh, oh, here, yeah, this one here. Staff of the Sylvan Wolf. This is actually one that where we do actually have special, like Staff of the Sylvan Wolf, does give us Spirit Blast. It also has Quick Stab and Summon a Primal Wolf as well. So Summon Primal Wolf, uh, Summon a Primal Wolf into Target Hex when uh, summoned to, uh, on favorite terrain uh, gains Frenzy, required at least one stack of Fury of the uh, Sylvan Wolf. Uh, so we need to get, this, this will make sense when we get into the actual game itself, consumes any remaining stacks of Fury of the Sylvan Wolf on, on use. So this is something that we build up through combat and then eventually we're going to be able to then summon that one in. So I think that that will be an interesting one for us to go with. I won't keep on looking at the others. Let's just keep on going back. We've got the eye colour. Let's go back now with the uh, with the, the mohawk sort of uh, shapes. Just try that one and just see how we go with the, um, with the horns. Let's just see too much there. It looks good though. Yeah, so there's double horns. That one's not bad. No, it's, I know she's female and they wouldn't have horns, but anyway, maybe little ones. Yeah, let's just go with that. That's probably more, more in keeping. <laughs> and um, the eye colors, what have we got? Yeah, look, I'll, I don't really care too much about the eye colours. To be honest, it can be a bit hard to sort of see what's going on. Actually, I'll go with the yellow. Or orange or whatever colour they actually are. So we'll keep it there. The outfits. That sort of works more in keeping with the support unit. 
and that does as well. That does as well. Actually, maybe that one there. I'll just go with that one. The helmet can also then be changed as well, like where you can sort of put in other other aspects. There's quite a lot you can, you've actually got in here that you can sort of start to unlock. That looks pretty good. Actually, I don't mind that. Feathers. I don't care whichever one we go with, to be honest. <laughs> you can also just randomise if you're wanting to. Um, God, it's a good game. There's just so much in it. Just which one of the first ones. Don't mind those. Um, I actually quite like the look of that one as well, but I think I'll just go back to the, the second one. Just get that one there, that'll do. It's just part of her helmets. So Kat's saying, uh, funny how some people hate f uh, furries, yet they uh, play this kind of fantasy games. Uh, that's different, I think. Because <laughs> you're not, you're not, in, the, you're not in, a, in your own costume, I guess. But it's, um, and also like this is, uh, for me, this is m much more mythological, um, you know, with the, with the actual overall approach. For me, it's, I always think of Pan and stuff like that. Um, Okay, so cat saying I've got lots of comments from my cat ears. <laughs> yeah, no, so I don't know. Like for me, I, I think I think mythology. I think back to um, uh, you know the uh, you know Bacchus and stuff like that. The followers of Bacchus, things along those sorts of lines. Uh, anyway, let's select that one. Uh, yeah, the actual the actual color. This is now new as well. Uh, it's now been split, so you've got like everything from your pantheon is making through here. Just basic emblems, then you've got the different affinities. So if we go with, um, which one should we do? Uh, maybe we'll go something like this, or um, maybe a moon. And we'll choose the, um, actually we've got more nature and order, actually no, we, we are much more nature. I thought we were more astral, I, thought we were, I forgot what we'd chosen. Um, so back into this way. Um, let's choose the uh, let's choose the wolf. Oh, that's a bear, isn't it? That one. <clears throat> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You got a few extras down this way. Go that one. Some sort of eye. We have the dark, the dark green. It's probably the one that we were using. Maybe dark brown. Go that way. That'll do us. Okay, select that one. Your journey begins. Now, this it said that you could actually name your city. I'm not sure where that is. Uh, we'll see what actually happens in the, in the next screen. So, um, uh, so uh, hating furies is out of is, is one of the few things that still accept. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, Raven Khan saying this is all about hate here. Is, is Dad's is full of love, except for uh, even for halflings. I've got love for halflings now because I uh, I think that halflings work well with this with this uh, actual approach. To be honest, and I'm actually looking more forward to playing those sorts of things than actually doing the goatkin and the uh, wolfkin uh, because of what you can now do with them uh, it's, it's sort of quite interesting uh, so we've got uh, Carwin Thunderborn I quite like the name so I'm going to lock those two in now she is an exalted shaman I can actually change that if I'm wanting to uh, tweak that one but I'm, I'm happy with that one it's, it still has the male female male female looking through there so um, so Raven Kitson I used to love halflings in the original Age of Wonders I, I never did I've never have I still remember, I think the very first game that you play in Age of Wonders 1 had a halfling on the road that you had to talk to or something like that vaguely. I still vaguely remember that. Um, so we'll go and um, we'll go and go to Wild Spirits. Some, I don't think I'll um, we'll just go with a few uh, Caprian Druids. Druidic Goats. Primal Goatkin. Horn Spirit Callers, that'll do us, that'll do us, we'll just go that way. Ramcons, I still remember, uh, but there is uh, some unit um, 
they get that I still really enjoyed uh, that could uh, stealth. Um, there was also, they had like a leprechaun unit, I think, from memory, uh, back in the original Age of Wonders, where, like, I still remember the laugh. It was like a, it was every time you clicked on it, you get this really obnoxious laugh. <laughs> but it was a very powerful unit. Um, anyway, onwards, let's continue on. Now we get to select, oh, hang on, no, we don't get to select. I thought we, I thought there was a place where we could select other things with this. Have we missed something? Now this looks dull, but that will brighten up in just a second. There we go. So it's still, it's much more dull with the forests and things that in this particular version. So Cow and Thunderborn, uh, Tome of Roots. Uh, so we've got Goatkin, Sylvan Wolf is the primal. Uh, Druidic trans Transformers, uh, Talented Collectors, Hardy Tough and Herbie Vore. So we'll just go that way. Uh, by the way, so did I, I think I mentioned before that necromancy has been changed a lot in this game. Uh, if you do go that way, uh, which we're not, but if you, if you did. We start off with Healing Roots and also with Ancestral Harmony. All right, so we'll just go through, we'll just start to play now. It only took an hour to do all that. That's not too bad. <laughs> so Dave saying, I might have to unsubscribe because of the sudden love of halflings. Uh, can you still throw chickens? No, you can't throw chickens anymore. Thank God. God, that was annoying. That was that was so bad, that DLC for Age of Wonders 3. Unbelievably bad. It was, I think, one of the worst, worst additions to a game I've ever seen. Um, it was unbelievable. Um, Raven Khan saying, with the DLC, it was just, it was just it's the game in, in general. I love Necromancy. Necromancy has changed with the base game. Um, I'll show you, actually. Let's set one up, just so you can sort of see what it looks like. Um, there's a lot of changes with Necromancy. So we'll save where we are. Just press Escape and save the game. I mean, the idea of this is to show what's happening with the game. So I'll just go and save. And I did set up, uh, when I was... Um, on my live stream earlier I did show um, like I did set up a halfling group that was set up as fey type you know as a fey type group which I thought worked really quite thematically oh this is this is new as well realm overview so we get to now see all of this as well like you know basically what the what all the all the parameters are that's actually new in the game uh, what else is there that's new I think that's all the only thing we see that's new there let's just go back out and exit the game to menu and I'll just go to a new game. I'll just very quickly set up. In fact, maybe they've just already got one that's uh, going to work. We'll just go with... Um, uh, which one should we do? The Dark Hollows. That'll do us. I think it doesn't really matter what that is. Just go select. So I've got a whole lot of different stuff in through there. Just go next. Your journey starts here. Uh, yeah, that's Risen Frostlings here, yeah, Tome of Necromancy. This one does start off already with everything that, it, that is sort of required for it. Um, so this is actually a group of, um, this has got Risen, this is essentially fro um, cold-blooded Frostlings, uh, but with Necromancy. So there will be others as well. What's the typical Necromancy one? There's one, isn't there? Necrotic Goblins. So this one is Tome of Necromancy. This one probably is actually going to work out more like what it would be yeah so this is like a, a necromantic um, group of goblins so this is just in the library this these are ones that you just you know that come with the game so gloom hook nail let's select the faction as, as, a, as an example but this is coming in the free update as you may not be able to see much of it So these are necromancers. Yeah, it's, I think it'll take too long before we get to uh, see it, but they've changed every single every single time of necromancy has now been changed. Um, so they've tweaked everything. Uh, so we've got ne uh, necrotize. So sustain um, frost damage and blight damage becomes decaying. When it dies, it becomes a decaying zombie under your control until the end of combat. But the thing that you really want to be doing is, is getting the... Um, uh, is picking up the souls, which is this one through here. So used for undead units and shadow spells. So to pick up the undead units, that's now completely changed, uh, depending on who you kill. And so uh, when we go in to actually kill a unit with, a, with these guys, 
Actually, I think we need, actually, we have enough in here. And so this one here is interesting because we've got like a group of uh, warriors. We have a, a group, in fact, let's just do this one here. Let's go and do it so we can sort of see what actually happens with this. Uh, oh, but actually, before we do that, the tomes, the tomes. I'll show the tome library. So we've got the uh, Tome of Necromancy, and I can't remember exactly what the changes actually are. That'll be down the bottom, I think. Yeah, so Tome of, Tome of Necromancy, Soul Collection. Uh, you get the Necromancer back in through here as well. So you stre strengthen the undead and create them from, from corpses. We had them before, uh, so they're still there. You've got Skeleton Reanimation. When killing racial units, uh, gain the option to spend souls to create skeletons after combat. We do need to get to that one actually i'm not going to have a chance to show this in that case i thought we might be able to do that straight away but this is um essentially it all comes down now to getting more and more souls uh the souls are now harder to get than what they were before uh so that's actually fairly cool but with this one through here depending on what you what what you necrotize or reanimate uh, you've got different classes now of skeletons that come through, not just the ones that have just got the pole arms. So the pole arms are still there, but you've now got three others as well. Uh, this is necrotic magic. That's not going to help us that much. Um, Tome of Souls. These have all had other changes. So this is, you've now got Brain Horror Reanimation. I don't remember if that was there before. I can't remember much about doing it. Uh, Soul Overview, you've got, this, you've got the uh, Restore Undead Army. Restore 20 hit points to all undead units in a target-friendly army. Uh, soul binders. Yeah, there's a whole lot of new stuff. Summon corrupt soul. I can't remember what was here before. The Doom Herald. So this is pretty much most of this is going to be necromancy. Uh, cruel weaponry. No, that's actually not. Then you've got uh, the Great Transformation. Domain of Death. Necratic Spires. There is actually a list, if you have a look on Steam, it goes through all of the changes. This is the Bone Dragon reanimation. I think these are new. These require, um, like to actually do these, you need to have killed a dragon in combat and then you can raise it. Or you need to, I think you need to have, um, yeah, when killing a non-racial tier five unit, gain the option to spend souls to create a bone dragon. So any tier five unit that's non-racial, uh, you can actually then bring back as a bone dragon. So that's actually one of the, these are one of the new things. Let me go back to the Tome of Souls. So this one here is, when killing a non-racial tier 3 or 4 unit, gain the option to spend souls to create a bone horror after combat. And so these cost 50. The bone dragon costs 100 souls to bring this one back. And so you can then start to, you can start to build up a really personalised necro, ne, necrotic army uh, of different sorts of undead. Uh, and also when you do go back, even to with the first one, the Tome of Necromancy and Reanimate Skeleton, when killing racial units, you gain the option to spend souls to create skeletons after combat. So if we had a look at the, um, at, and I don't know if they can, I, I haven't tested it yet to see what happens if it does come back um, as the actual type of unit that you kill. I, I don't know if it does. I don't think it does. I think it's just skeleton still. Let's just go and hide the tome library. And uh, we'll go skeleton reanimation just as an example. But if we have a look at these stacks that we actually have of different things, so this one here, we've got the choice of, um, the, we've got a shield unit, so a defender unit, and then we have uh, two shock units back and through here. Killing this would, we, and if we did actually have the raised skeleton, we'd then be able to have the choice of, um, of what type of unit comes back as a skeleton. So we can have fighters, we can have pole arms. I think that the fighters, these would all be just fighters. Back over through here though, we can actually have fighters. These ones aren't applicable, so we don't get anything for these. We still get souls though. And, um, and this one here is a, as a skirmish unit. I think these come back as, um, as archers, as skeleton archers. So we have choices now as to building up our armies to not just have skeleton pole arms. We've actually can now really start to flesh out armies in an interesting way. So Necromancer is now a much, much more interesting and engaging uh, you know, uh, way to play the game than what it was uh, just in the new free update. So, so the, yeah, big big change of the necromancy. Anyway, let's let's get out of that one. Just surrender, and then quit, you know, kill that one off. But it's um, it's very very cool. Oh, the, yeah, there's so much that's coming in this. It's seriously so much. I'll just get rid of that one.
that session. And we'll just go back into the game. Uh, so Raven Cohen is saying, is there a specific DLC that adds the Bone Dragons? No, uh, that's actually just part, that's a free free uh, update to the game. So that those necromancy changes don't require a DLC. So that's just, uh, that's just basically is what you can get. As long as you can find tier five units to kill that aren't racial, uh, then so as long as they're unusual and tier five, then you can get Bone Dragons after that. As long as you've also got the souls. We don't have souls with what we're doing through here. And so, um, again, this is fairly colourful that we sort of see in through this other side, even though we've got like an autumn forest in around us. Uh, but if you play with the, um, with the hostile seas, this becomes even duller than what we're seeing through here. Uh, now, we do actually have an underground there. I'll just have a quick look. We do actually have this special Sylvan Wolf Den. Now, we will actually have a mission that will come up very shortly for us to have a look at that one. Uh, so we, we will be wanting to annex this when we can. Um, here's our scout unit. Now we also have a um, Marauder Guard, which is on top of Battlefield Remnants, so it's a large pickup that could be useful. The, um, what else do we have? We've got something over there. We've got gold out that way. Quarry, there's some, there's a pickup in there. This is a food stash. Um, there's a pirate den out this way. There's a lot more stuff fleshed out on the oceans now as well, particularly with hostile seas. I don't know whether to go underground or not. I don't think I will. Well, the, really for, for, for taking things on, um, there's really nothing much on there at this stage. How big's the map? It won't be that big. Yeah, it's a pretty small map. I think we'll go underground. Now we have a cartographer's tent there. Um, we'll make use of that. There's another brigand camp down this way. Let's just move this one across. And we only have four units in through here. Because we went with the Druidic Transformers, we end up with a, with a random um, elemental. In this case, we've got a Lesser Magma Spirit, which does have fire bolts. We do actually have also the uh, Primal Data and the uh, Protector back in through here as well, along with our, um, with the, with our ruler. Uh, this one through here currently looks like it's only got two units in it. It's a Tier 2 sting, uh, Floral Stinger, and then we have the, the um, Tier 2 Dire Penguin. I think we might build up a bit of a, um, a bit of an army before we go off and do anything. Let's go and send one of these. Now this one here, yeah, well, that's, okay. that's okay. Let's just move down. Pick that up in just a second. Just keep the others back where they are. Uh, okay, so now getting these different things, we're now going to find us a lot more unique buildings for the different cultures that you then choose. And so we've got the Woodcarver's Workshop, which gives us draft production and food. Um, it unlocks the uh, Stone Stell and the uh, and the Blacksmith as well. Uh, six turns to get that one. Requires a Forester to boost it, so we'll most likely be getting a Forester because of so much so much um, forest in around us. The Storehouse requires a Forester as well, so we won't we won't get the, for, the those. The Shrine requires a Quarry, which is a fair way off. So we could get that one. The library requires another forester, so we won't get that one. The vendor requires a, a, a farm, which we do have access to down there. But we won't get it initially, so I'm going to go with the vendor. And as far as the uh, as far as getting these, I'll, I'll go with another protector. So we'll go and grab that one. All right. Um, so uh, Raven Constance saying, oh Lord, there's a Dragon DLC. Yeah, that was the first one that came in. That was very good as well. All the DLCs have been great. So, um, okay, so Wolf Tooth saying, I'm hoping we get non-undead shadow affinity uh, tomes in Eldritch Realms. I like uh, dark culture, but just like being effectively forced into necromancy with shadow effectively only having two non-undead tomes. I agree with you, actually. I, I think that would be cool to get extras. Again, maybe that could be something in a mod um, like that would, uh, if they don't actually add it themselves. They've certainly been adding tomes. Set the arcane research. Um, 
blight blades blight blades uh, we've got the um, plus 20 percent damage against poisoned or decaying units okay that's going to work in well with the poisoned arrows the entwined th entwined thrall Yeah, I won't worry too much about that one, I don't think. I think we might start off with the poisoned arrows. Let's go that way. Spirits of the forest. So we've got an encounter quest. So um, we need to investigate the apparition. So you've led your horns, spirit callers, ardent followers to the sylvan wolf of a new realm and when something catches your eye. Not far from Stone Den, a wondrous tea, tree pulsates with invigorating energy. Its strangely familiar energy inspires you even from afar. A faint howl of the wind calls you to it, your eyes fix on the tree. You discern a faint apparition of immense power. Could it be? Is, it, is that the ancestral spirit of your, of the, your horned spirit callers, the sylvan wolf herself? Does a silver wolf whom your people intimately call Oath Mother truly grace this realm? You should visit the, uh, the silver wolf den presently. So, um, so we, that's basically what you, you always start off with um, with being called to the totem of your uh, of your of who you, of who you've got there. So that happens every single time. I'll, I'll, I don't think there's any real reason that we that we can't just do this. We shall. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just do it next turn, just to keep them all together. All right, now we'll get the cartographer's tent and find out something interesting. There we go. Bushgrove. Now we can't quite see it, but we can see that there's actually a totem village there. So this is very likely to be the same as us. You can see that it's got the wolf totem in the, in the middle, which is the same as what they've got. So the wolf totem. The eyes, yeah, the eyes that go off. <laughs> so anyway, that's something that we can uh, certainly make use of. Um, uh, Hugh David saying, how important is it to establish a city underground? I tend to find uh, play mostly above ground. Yeah, I, I'm mostly above ground. If you can find a spot, with, it's mainly comes down to the resources. You do want to you do want to get that second city established pretty quickly. But this is only a small island. It may still be worth getting down in these other areas. Particularly as we've got land over here. That one there is going to be blocked off to us. But we do need to uh, see it, see what's going on with it. Okay, we can now annex our first province. So, um, we can only build forests. This is why I wanted to wait until I had the forest before I could do, go and do anything in these sorts of areas. We can get the, uh, the gold mine there, but I think I'm going to go with the forest just so I can build things a bit faster. And I will grab this, this territory. So Reagan kind of saying, is Empires and Ashes worth grabbing as well? Looks like it just adds a new culture. Um, that's that's even bigger than um, than Dragon Dawn. Uh, there's more in that than uh, than in Dragon Dawn. Like it's basically it costs twice as much. It definitely is worth getting. Uh, absolutely worth getting. There is only one. There's only one culture as such. But if you have a look and read what it actually does bring to the game, it adds an enormous amount. Um, so. Um, yeah, kind of saying, oh, whatever you said, they were all good. Yeah, they are excellent. They really are good. Um, so uh, Hugh David's saying to Wolf Tooth, yeah, thanks. Uh, that's true. You end up having to go underground to defeat the AI. Well, in this case, they should both be above ground, I think. The Pirate Cove is going to be hard for us to take on. This is newish in the game as well. Again, I can't remember if it's, if it's come this time or not. Let's go into here and um, talk with this one. So, Spirits of the Forest Aftermath. So, when you arrive at Sylvan Wolf Den, the visage of the Sylvan Wolf has lured you there. Uh, it's just disappeared. Now, this is... Maybe let's see this one. Yeah, anyway, that's okay. Um, you examine the enthralling tree and notice that the creatures of all size found refuge in its bark and branches. Oath Mother's influence is palpable here. Uh, you recall ancient legends that promise formidable boons to the most ardent torchbearers of Oath Mother. Claim his territory so you may build up the Sylvan Wolf Temple. Which, which invokes the power of the Sylvan Wolf to slowly turn your domain into forests where your horned spirit callers thrive. 
and so uh, win the Oath Mother's favour by securing at least two uh, silver wolf dens and build a silver wolf temple. The silver wolf is, is uh, guaranteed to notice your devotion. So we need to find another one, which we will be able to should be able to find near the other other uh, location. I think the other city. So if we can get the other city under our control, that would actually work in fairly well. So when uh, we now have got secu we've secured this one. So we are now the protector. Now we've got another another unit that's just come in. Um, what's required? We will have to clear this one out. Let's go underground to see what's down here. Oh, it's a gold level. A gold ancient wonder. I'm going to progenitor to Gollum. Hmm, okay. We can't go in the water. Here we go. We found, uh, meeting the expansionist uh, Fargosk. So Countess Demilia Yob of the free city of uh, Fargosk uh, greets you with a nod. Greetings, exalted shaman Carwin Thunderborn. Your culture intrigues us, and we believe a cooperation could benefit us all. With, with our technology and your expertise as Godir, uh, we can make this realm truly ours. We don't set up a, uh, we don't, uh, why don't we set up a communication and become powerful allies? So we can give her our Whispering Stone and start negotiations and gradually improve this one across to us. So these also have got um, goat horns, but I think these are just, are they, I think these are halflings, I think. What are they? Little engineers. What are the little engineers? They're dracon draconic, uh, dr dr draconian transform transformed um, halflings, I think. Yeah, halflings. They are halflings. <laughs> They're a reaver culture. Okay, that's pretty cool. All right, so um, story of the little engineers. Stocky, happy-go-lucky beings um, who enjoy wild adventures just as much as a well-deserved nap. They can thrive underground. Yeah, that, that's okay. That's fine. So we'll, um, we'll inspect and then give the Whispering Stone across. So that's a little bit bigger. It's uh, had an unfortunate accident there with a with a razor blade, by the looks of things. Um, so um, where are we going? So Ravenkind saying, "I wish you'd got some sort of kickback." As always, you, you sell me so many games. Yeah, no. Even my Nexus game store is actually really suffering at the moment because um, they lost a whole lot of the games that I tend to cover. They no longer have them on there. So I've only got like a handful of games over there through there. Uh, Wolf to the St. Pirate Cove was a base game thing. The forest uh, variations were added in the Wolf update before they were all one type, but now they've, uh, they've got this visual variety depending on the biome. Yeah, and Wolf to saying from the uh, art uh, dev diary a couple of weeks ago before everything was a, um, a drab range of greens. Now they have full fall colours for the uh, highland biomes, pinks for the Arctic, every forest biome. Got a, yes, yeah, got a, uh, a an art an art upgrade, uh, which looks great. And Raven can sound like they're going to be need they need to be relocated far, far away from, from you. <laughs> uh though they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Uh they're followers of the dragon. They've formed a strong bond with dragons and fight alongside them in battle. So the city has access to young frost dragons, uh obsidian wyverns, draconic transformations, young gold golden dragons. This is pretty cool actually. This is again this is new stuff. Um new stuff indeed. Anyway, that's going to be good. So we'll just let that one sort of develop. It's going to be a little while before we can get across the water. We will need to go in and get water uh, movement so we can get off the island. But we can start to become more friendly in here. Uh, this one here, we'll just start to clean out these different zones. Actually, one thing I will do is I'm not building anything else down here. I think we'll go and get, this is now got two protectors. Let's go and grab a primal data as well. this one it's a bit dangerous for us but we should be okay uh, with the combination of everything we've got so let's just do manual combat I changed the um, the timing actually earlier when I was playing it uh, for the tool tips from um, from 0.25 to 0.4 and it's actually made a good it feels much better 
uh, just in terms of it. I don't notice it when I when I sit and hover over it, but I do notice if I want to cl click on something, it doesn't get in the way. So we've got the Dire Penguins, which uh, if we have a look at these guys, Melee Strike, Defensive Mode, Low Maintenance, they don't have much that they can really do to us, so that's very, very basic. But these guys are a bit different. So these have actually got um, uh, Melee Strike, uh, but the main thing they use is this Poisonous Spores. It's got a cooldown of two, so when they use them, it, it, there is actually a bit of a cooldown. The target enemy is, is damaged, and I just got to see if it was. Uh, yeah, I thought it may have been a, a an area of of, a, of of effect attack, but it's actually not. So that's actually okay. Um, Ninety percent chance of inflicting poison for three turns. Now it's not going to worry us too much. Uh, poisons and stuff. So its ability. That's how far it can go. So we can actually, at the moment, it can't quite hit us. But I think I'll, I think I'll give it the uh, the actual commander as the target. These do just raise things up a little bit. I'm just setting this one up as a, as a target for them. Now if I've screwed up and somehow missed it, it's an area of effect attack. That won't be good. I'm pretty sure it didn't say that. Yeah, no, I think we're okay. Okay, they're inside the shield wall, so everything's got the shield wall around it. These penguins uh, can't quite reach us. I thought we went with mana addicted, but we didn't, did we? Now there's a change in here as well. That's a different one. This is the combat history, so we now sort of can have this one. I mean, we sort of had it there before. Uh, that's the playback speed. That's the four times playback speed. So you can actually now play back. Can you play it? Actually, where does that one work? Top of auto combat. We don't want to do that one. Actually, this is just the story. That's the combat speed itself. We had this before, but it's sort of um, it's now just handled differently than what it was. Uh, we've got surrender. We've got uh, restart combat. Uh, combat overview which is now over here. It, 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 so during the combat, we can now see what's going on exactly, how much movement points we have. So this is now new in the game, uh, how much the enemy has got as well. So at the start of our turn, we're not really doing much. Uh, so let's we'll go and close this one. Well, one thing I'm interested in with that one is what happens with the, um, now with our primal datas, we have the Sylvan Wolf's boon. And so units is blessed by the Sylvan Wolf. Uh, it gains a rising fury stack when attacking. At five stacks, these turn into stacks of Fury of the Sylvan Wolf. The unit's base attack gains plus three spirit damage and plus two spirit damage per friendly unit adjacent to the target. So if we can swarm in, uh, we can then sort of start to uh, do even more damage. Each attack removes a, a stack of uh, Fury of the Sylvan Wolf. So um, removes it. I thought it would actually add it. Maybe I'm, running, I'm misreading what that actually does mean. So this disengaging shot. And so what this, this one here is, is one that we can run up to a unit and do a point blank shot. So it deals damage in the target unit and then jump back three hexes. We gain three stacks of Rising Fury on, on the use of it, uh, but it does require the Sylvan's Wolf Boon to be, be kicking in. Again, we need five of these to be able to, uh, at five stacks, these turn into the Fury of the Sylvan Wolf. And so that allows this disengaging shot to be, uh, to be then fired. So we can't do that one just yet. Uh, I don't think we can. It says we can actually. That's interesting. So that's 10 10. Or we just do this one here. We've got sort of the standard one, which is just 10 physical damage. Uh, I think we'll still just go this way for now. Um, although we can, forgot that. Yeah, let's just go this way to start with. See, Rising Fury, Rising Fury 2. 
Rising Fury 3. So we got up to th level 3 there. Uh, this one doesn't get it. This one it's not part of our actual racial group. And we will be wanting to move this one down to attack this, or maybe not. Let's go and hit this guy. Now we might blind this one just so that it can't, well it's already used its uh, ability, it's going to have to now use the melee strike. I'll keep on focusing on this one in this case. It has been blinded, we've got uh, two lots of Rising Fury. And that one, because it's blind it can't retaliate. I can do more of that. Now we have two action. Let's just go and try that again. The um, uh, where was it? This one here. Combat overview. Yeah. So we get to see. We don't get to see the um, like all of the the various um, extra abilities though. I was. I thought we may have. For example, these sorts of things. So we're getting three times the uh, rising fury. burning. I think I'm just going to lock this one in. It puts up a shield wall for these, just to protect them a little bit. And we do have some spells. We've got Healing Roots and we've got Ancestral Harmony, which will then just give us temporary healing points, which we don't need just yet. So we'll just leave that one where that is. Hi, the Grand Jester. How are you going? So I finally caught a live stream. So we're still picking up the Rising Fury by being attacked like this after our hero. That's okay. Right, now these are in flame, which we have to be careful of because this, got, this thing came through. It's now catching, everything's catching fire because of this uh, magma spirit. Uh, we're going to be able to kill this one off pretty steadily, just with these. Let's move out. Away from the flame. We are on fire already. And two grazes, unfortunately. Now we have Fury of the Sylvan Wolf in there. Yep, so we can do the kill. And now we've got Fury of the Sylvan Wolf there as well. I like how everything caught fire. I should—I forgot about that. Again, it's, the game is improving a lot. Yeah, we're inside, still still inside the zone of control. Um, can't do anything with that one. Leave it there. It's caught fire from the magma spirit. There we go. Well, we didn't get to do anything special with the uh, with the, the um, rising spirits. We end up getting the the primal the primal sort of attack that we can then go and get. So we're just going to close that one. And what do we pick up this time? Oh, just we only got just got uh, draft. We'll clear this brigand camp out so we don't have to deal with it. Turn. 
Okay, so Grand Jester saying, considering getting this game since I've heard very good things about it, how, in, how important is a DLC? Just asking, just in case, being a Paradox game and all. Uh, yeah, we've spoken about this before. Uh, it's the DLC is very good. Uh, it's uh, not critic. It's not essential. Like if you wanted to see if you like the game, you'll you'll know from playing the base game. Uh, the base game is is great, but the DLC really is exceptionally good. And uh, one of the things, if they were going to do the, the uh, paradox sort of big DLC bloat that they do with a lot of their games, they wouldn't have they wouldn't be releasing it like they are. Like this, the DLC with this particular DLC we're showing off, I think would be split into three, uh, at least three different DLCs if they were going to do that. And they've, they've, they've put a lot of stuff into this one. And uh, similarly with the other DLCs, there's a lot of content in the DLCs. I, I, Triumph, when uh, to put that into context, um, Triumph had built Age of Wonders 3 on their own. Then then when they, uh, then Paradox acquired T Triumph Studios. They, 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 so Triumph is the developers, but um, Paradox is the publisher. And normally with what happens with Paradox is that when they take acquire a company, they then take over the running of the company. But because Triumph was a very established company, it, they came up with an agreement where Triumph could still run, do the running of the studio and work out the direction of their games. Whereas, and Paradox would then help with the, um, with the marketing and also with quality assurance and stuff like that. And it actually has worked incredibly well from what, just as, as an outsider, seeing what they've actually done. And so when they did Planetfall, because that was the first game that they did, Planetfall, um, they actually went into Planetfall and Triumph Studios said there will only be four DLCs. We are, we are, worried, we are worried about the, 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 uh, the you know, perceived DLC bloat. We won't do more than four. Ultimately, that game would have been better with five or six to, uh, DLCs, but because they made that commitment, they, 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 um, they won't change from that. In this game, they haven't said anything. I've even asked questions and said, what's, what's your policy on, on DLC? Uh, and they, they will not answer it. <laughs> so there could be a perceived fear that there's going to be a, a bloat of DLC. But I don't think there will be, for the simple reason that, as I said before, the DLC that's come out has been so impactful so meaningful with a lot of stuff in it they could very easily have split this out it could they could easily have 10 dlcs by now with what they've actually put in you know with what they've, they've given us in the dlcs there's so much content in it and um but they didn't they haven't done it like they've actually put a lot of it's a lot of value in the dlc so far so i don't think we're going to end up with the with the bloat um so i i, I feel that there will be more than four which is actually probably a good thing so I think that after they, they committed to four initially, and then I think they're going to see how the game has gone. Now, it's already a wildly successful game. So I think that they will have other plans to then extend it in other ways, which I'm really looking forward to. So I think this is going to be an awesome game. Wolf Tooth saying, um, yeah, sorry, there we go. It's, um, and uh, we, we're, we, and, we at W&E Play Games says um, uh, each DLC comes with a really good free patch too. Yes. And no exception with this one. This one is as good as the DLC, the, the patch that comes with this one. And again, those patches are free for everyone. Uh, Wolf Tooth saying pretty much all the major changes to the base game were added in for free, uh, free updates alongside DLC releases. Most of the DLC are just additional themed content. Yes, you don't need you don't need the DLC to, to have a great game, uh, but it, it certainly does flesh it out. Wolf Tooth saying, speaking of which, Triumph recently had a survey that seemed like they were gathering player feedback for a season two or of DLC. Or maybe an entirely new game. Yeah, that would be interesting to see what they sort of come back with. I, I haven't seen that that survey. The Grand Gesture saying, so the DLC policy is similar to Total War, where it uh, mainly content while the game changes stuff uh, comes in free patches. Um, it's not... Yeah, I mean, it's... There's certainly... The, the stuff that has come in each content is very, very themed. Um, like Dragons, for example, came in, the, uh, in one content. Um, the... Um, you know, like the last one was Reavers and, and a different way of sort of playing the game as well. There's, there's a lot of changes when they do come through. A lot of additional things come in. So it's not, it's not just, yeah, it's not basic stuff. The, the DLCs are extremely impactful um, if you do get them. There's, I've, I personally think they're well worth the, uh, you know, the, the good value, I think, from, you know, just with what you actually get inside them. Um, so uh, Killers, Killers Turner, you're not saying it could happen, but... Um, with what they announced for DLC, uh, so Age of Wonders says DLC, I think it's likely they'll, they'll commit to the four DLCs. Well, they've got the four immediately, but they're not talking about what's coming. So I'm assuming there'll be more DLCs, but I think it's gonna be good value DLCs, not like uh, Solaris and those sorts of things where you end up with just 
so many DLCs, um, you know, Europa Universalis, it just ends up becoming... I can understand why they had did it originally, um, because they were niche games, but they're no longer niche games, and they're now more mainstream. Kind of wanting to go back to a full set of DLCs to play with together. Yeah, it's... Um, it's it, like the, and we, we'll know that the next DLC will probably be three or four months away like by the time it's sort of released but it's um, these have been great these DLCs really really good now we need to heal up I'm just going to go back into my territory and we'll leave that one there now we do have an Empire development skill already this one here is um, so founding and absorbing cities takes minus two turns a newly founded or absorbed cities gains plus one for, uh, population we're going to be doing that one very very soon I also want to get across the water, but I think I'll actually choose this one right now. It's going to cost me a fair bit of uh, my Imperium. Now we can get another one. We've got 102 gold income. Um, we can get, once we clear this one out, we can get the mana from there. And we can get the growth from here. So let's go and grab a farm. Right, let's have a look around. So we've got different protections in through this other side. Ah, we're inside the territory. So now we have to move off. I know I'm gonna get I don't want to get caught, so I'm gonna go back out. around okay, we now produce the vendor we now have the forester so we can now start to get uh, uh, cheaper yeah, it's one of those hovering things which are annoying uh, so we have the sylvan wolf temple which um, that one's going to take four turns so annexes provinces with uh, sylvan wolf den um, so yeah annex provinces with sylvan wolf den grant plus five mana Start altering terrain to forest at one province per turn. This extends to a radius equal to the, the city tier. So we, we won't get it much at the start because we're surrounded by forest, but that will change. Uh, we've got the storehouse now already. We've got the town hall too, which we can get the animist and the primal charger. Um, that one, the boost is to have five population. We've only got um, three. This one's boosted. Yeah, the library. I might go to the library just so we can sort of get on top of this. Let's get that one out of the way and let's get another one of these. Just yet. Okay, I've got six. We've got a full stack there. Oh, the, another big change in the game is that it's now you now get um, you now get punished for having more than one hero in a stack. So that's one thing we have to be a bit, bit more mindful of. We want to be saving up our gold a little bit for when we get the next uh, hero. Then the hero is going to come in at turn ten. So it's sort of heading that way. So Raven Kind this game is so pretty. It really is. And um, yeah, it's it's an amazingly beautiful game. It always all of them have been. Like I've I've always loved playing uh, Age of Wonders. It's quite energizing to play it. Okay, we can now do the poison arrows, so we'll uh, get that one started. There we go, we've got the protector. Research. Now we've got Wolf Primal Commun Communion. So this is actually a um, a primal one that we can then go and get. So grants non-culture units the Sylvan Wolf Boon and Forest Walk. So skirmisher units, shock units, shield units, polar arm units, fighter units, battle mage units. We've got one of those in our army, which is the um, which is the elemental. We were going to be wanting to get more elementals. I think that this will be worthwhile getting. Uh, the Vine Prison though is another good one. 
And I think I'll go that way. Okay, Army of Carwin. Um, yeah, so we'll go in. We'll, we'll clear out the big brigand camp now, I think. Yeah, so uh, we play games are saying, yeah, art direction for this game is amazing. It really is. It, 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 every one of their games has been like that. Um, so, um, yes, yeah, so you're saying, is this game anything like Civ? Uh, no. <laughs> Basically, uh, saying it, it is, but I would say it's more, so Wolf is saying, yeah, it is, but it's more focused on tactical combat than civilization, although it's still important. You do build up your cities, but it's not like Civ in that sort of sense. Um, there's no eras, uh, it, like it, so it 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 it's much more contained um, than what Civ is. Like Civ is is all about expanding eras, which I I don't like that mechanic in games to be honest. And, but this one is um, this one is all about the tactical combat. I'll do I'll do it when when we go into here. This should be an easy fight for us, but I'll actually explain everything that's going on. Every every little nuance uh, because this is where the game really does shine. Like it's. Um, there's no other game that's got tactical combat as good as what uh, uh, Age of Wonders has. Like it's always been great. Now, when I go in, I, I moved this character into here because I knew that we would have a support range. Now, when I hover over that one, see how there's like a red line that goes in around here. So when I've got it hovering over there, you can see the little red line now with, near where those birds are sort of flying. Uh, with that, anything that's inside there, the top three other units that are in around there will then be part of this fight as well. And so uh, when I go in, We've got 450 combat ratings against their 215. So at this stage, it's a one-sided fight. So if I move down into here, for example, sometimes there's hidden units. We've now just marched into their area, the brigand camp area. We can have a bit of a concern what it says. An evil presence uh, is, in the, is in this particular area, just going through the actual brigands. So a, a band of bloodthirsty brigands has claimed this region. Uh, if left unchecked, they will grow in strength, expand their territory, and send out invasion armies. At the moment, they're in a deep sleep. The infestation will become active in nine plus turns. And so at this point in time, similar with the Pirate Cove, we can't see it there, but this one will eventually keep on growing. They'll, they'll wake up and then send raids up against our territory. So we have to clear these out. That's much, much more difficult for us to clear out than what this is. So the Brigand Camp is something we can, we can just deal with. Uh, there's only the three units. If we, if we stood next to it, we'd know what there are. So in this case, we've got a, F a Fury, which is a ranged unit. Uh, we've got ourselves a Soother. So these are Purring Mystics. That one is a Lizard Looters. And that one is a, just an animal unit, a Slither Hatchling. So, um, what did we get to? Um, and, uh, and so, Clalistern, so if, if I'm missing comments, just do an at das tactic and it'll then be sort of like a, a bit of a red colour for me. I still may miss it, but at least at least there's a chance you'll see, I'll get I'll get to see it. Um, so Kill the Soon is in sort of saying at least a good thing with their approach to DLCs is that they're less likely to end up messing themselves up, like uh, yeah, like uh, Creative Assembly did with Total Warhammer Three. Yeah, it's sort of um, I don't think they're going to get greedy because they've had such a successful launch. Like this this game has already I think wildly outperformed what they were expecting. Um, you know, like because the the previous games were profitable, but not by much. You know what I mean? Like whereas this one has just been crazy with how well it's gone. This is again where the combination of Paradox and Triumph Studios working together has just been so good. Um, it, like I think one of the one of the issues of having Paradox involved in the development has been that we've ended up with a bit more bland sort of style of um, of factions a little bit. Uh, that's the only negative I can see. Everything else is a positive. Like it's been really quite cool. So um, uh, anyway, let's go into it. So we'll just do this. We'll do this. Just do this battle. So we're going to go in with two different units. Again, that one's within the range of where we were in the old games. You had to be surrounding it, but you don't. You just have to be inside that red dotted line to be able to then uh, come in and, and actually take it on. So we'll go and do that. Let's do a safe battle. And so in this case, we've got two stacks. I can I can decide if I don't want a stack to come in, by the way. I can actually turn it off uh, for the actual battle. So I'll just go through all of these different things. Now, one of the things with the game, because it knows that the uh, that it's a difficult game, like you know, when they've when they've built Age of Wonders, they know it's difficult. And the easiest way to learn this game is to save scum. 
And so what they do in this game is they give you options to save scum all the way through. So we can do any at any point in time, we can save scum back to like previous turns or whatever it might be. Um, we've got a lot of options. And so it because it like that they know that you really do have to like to learn the game effectively. Safe scumming is by far the best way of doing it. So anyway, we can either just do auto combat, and it does play out an actual combat. And if we're not happy with an auto combat, we can then go and uh, and play it out ourselves. So that's often what I'll do if there's like a simple thing. But let's go through and actually talk about what's going to happen in this particular fight. So manual combat is what we want to do, but you do get a chance to see what you've like. You know, we know what we've got. I'll come through and talk. Maybe maybe I'll do that now. So we've got uh, Karen Thunderborn, so um, or Carwin Thunderborn. So she's got the Spirit Blast. She's got the Quick Stab. Uh, she also can summon the Primal Wolf if she can get five of those uh, special um, uh, Fury Fury tokens. So she needs to do like a, um, three attacks, and then she'll be able to summon in a Primal Wolf. So if we can do that, th th she'll be able to do a bit more. Um, so. Um, Wolf Tooth saying, yeah, for over uh, 12, 1,200 hours in Stellaris. I love that game. Yeah, it's I'm, all I'm saying is it's just a lot of a lot of DLC. Uh, Emil's saying, I honestly don't think Paradox is to blame for that. It's uh, basically a consequence of them deciding to go full hog on customization rather than more bespoke creations. Yeah, I'm not I'm not criticizing what they do because also they did start that whole DLC push uh, with very niche games, and it was how they made their money. So I get where they are, but I I do I'm glad that Triumph is putting so much value into their DLCs. Because I think that there were, there, there certainly have been DLCs that I've got from Paradox over the years where I'm thinking, you know, here we go, I get a desert themed, um, you know, cloak for someone, you know, it's got, there's five bucks or two bucks, whatever it might be. Um, it, it's, it just seemed that there was um, a lot of DLC that was introduced that was superfluous and it was, um, and it became annoying because you sort of you felt like you wanted to have the full collection, but you just you know it just wasn't worth it. Whereas this has been very very meaningful. Um, so um, yeah. Anyway, let's continue on. So it, we'll just go into manual combat now. The things we have to be careful of in here, we we have like basic types, and this is I think one of the problems with this game is that you assume because it's got a basic type. That, it's, that they all play exactly the same, and they actually don't. So you can see that, for example, in here we've got like a, a shield, what's called a shield unit. That's a shield unit. This is a battle mage unit, um, and then this is a, a couple of ranged units back in through here. This is technically a ranged unit as well. We have another shield unit back in through here. Now they still work as a shield unit, but there are unique things to every single unit. Similarly, back over through here, we've got another ranged unit. This one uses a bow, uh, a poison bow. We currently don't have poison on our bows, but we will soon. We use, we're using uh, blow darts. Uh, and then this is like a skirmisher unit. We'll get into battle and then we'll have a look and see what does go on. Yeah, we've just seen the last three DLC for Solaris have been really disappointing, to be honest. So they're all moving up. Uh, so we have this, th these aren't really random maps, they've got like a collection, a fairly big collection of maps, um, but they're always pretty much the same when you when you play them, but that's okay. It's, it all comes down to the tactical battles. So it's basically one side plays each, that's, those birds don't have any bearing on the actual game itself. Uh, it really comes down to understanding what your different units can do, and then planning to see what the enemy can do as well. So, for example, these skirmishers do actually have a, um, a venomous spit. Now, you'll see through here, if we have a look at this one, it's going to do ten, sorry, seven, 7 physical damage and 7 blight damage, and can, as a 90% chance, it's going to inflict poison that will last for 3 turns, which will then sort of drain away our, uh, our health a little bit over time. Now, there's a base 90% to hit with this particular one, and it can be fired at a range of 4. So if I click on that one, I can then sort of just see what it can actually then do with its movement. So if, we, and also, sorry, the other thing with that, see how it's got like the one dot down through here? It means it only takes one action point to actually fire this thing off. This one over through here is a melee strike, and you'll see it's got one big dot and then three little dots. At the moment, we've got three action points on this thing. If we were right next to it, it would then, it would then actually have uh, all three action points so we would attack three times. 
And so we don't want to, we don't want that to be the case. We don't want to be sort of allowing that to uh, get in too close to us. And so in this case, um, this thing can actually march all the way up to here and then fire this, which is what it's going to do. So it can, it can get that high up. Now it's not going to hurt us too much if it does fire at it. Also, you'll see when I hover over it, it's, it's got three dots. It's now two dots when it moves one to there, two dots to there, one dot to there. So at that point, it only has one attack. So at that stage, I can then I know that I'm pretty safe to actually be able to move into here because that one can only sort of move at one. Now you've got to then work this out for all of the different units. That's it's actually that is actually the most dangerous of the units. This one through here has got a ranged attack, and that's all it's got. We do want to close in on this one, so it's uh, it, it doesn't it, you, this one will dis like it can't actually fire the bow if it's engaged by a melee unit. And so we want our melee units to be able to close in on this particular unit. This one here can still fight melee, but this one can't. So, uh, so this this one here, what's actually what's that one there? It's poisonous, yeah. So this one does actually uh, any uh, melee attackers have a sixty percent chance of becoming poisoned if they attack this particular lizard man. Uh, so in this case, we've got the shoot bow uh, again, range four, ninety percent. This one has got one where every single shot, which is ten physical damage will be applied for every single action point. So uh, if we have a look at that one and just have that one selected at that location, it can, uh, it can't quite hit here, which is the, which was the magical place that we thought we'd get to. So if it moves around to be able to then shoot at that, it has to move to there, which is, a, it's only got two shots and there it's only got one shot. So that's a good spot for us to actually move into that particular location and set up along this line. So that's, we can sort of just planning that one. This one as well has got uh, like a spirits, a, a cosmic blast, range four, 90% base, uh, base attack. Um, it does five shock damage, five fire damage, and fire frost damage is, the, is what it actually does do. Single, it's only got a single shot. So when it does go off, it just, it, and that, so that means he can walk anywhere he likes and really be, he can, even now he can walk up to there if he wanted to and then fire at things. Now you'll see there that there's actually like a, um, a 25%. If you can hang on, why is that? If it's if it says that it's a 90%, so the 90% to, to hit in through there is it's the base, why is that different? And if we press, I think it's a control or shift. Um, I set a range there. And we can't see it, I think, don't think, until we actually get to do anything. Anyway, that's the enemy. Let's just get our own forces. Now, these guys have got a special ability, um, <clears throat> which is uh, the shield units. I've got a shield defense, which we can sort of see through here, shield wall. And what this one does is it puts up resistances and defenses. So it also gives another adjacent friendly units plus three defense, and it's immune to flanking, or any, any of the defense modes are immune to flanking. This unit ends its turn and goes into defensive mode, extends its zone of control to all adjacent hexes. And so it gives plus three defense to everyone else. So I'm gonna, we're gonna move up into that position, which we know can still be targeted, but not effectively. So we're just going to go and uh, and put that one into defensive mode. So in around him is now a shield wall. You can see the little shield. Anything that moves into there is going to be protected. Now we know we can also move into here. So let's go and do that. So I should have shown that this is exactly the same type of unit back over here. So uh, if we have a look at this, the basic units, this has got a range. This has got seven defense. Uh, so it's 52% of any physical damage is going to be mitigated and then it's got a um, uh, This re is resistance. There's no resistance against any other sort of magical type attack in this case with the uh, with the seven defense uh, You can see that the base for the unit is, is two the shield defense is plus three and tough is plus two and so the, the um, That's it. That, that's not the that's not the defense mode. It's just that it does have a shield and so we should see it there, I think. Shield unit, shield defense is natively there. This unit has plus three defense against non-flanking attacks. And so if a unit can get behind it, that doesn't apply. It's only to units in the front that it has an extra three. So it's, that's why it's seven that we see through here. Base is two, shield defense for front attacks is three. And t it's also tough because it's a goat can. So the goats, we, the goats came in with tough, and so it gives them a lot of a lot of defence, which is fairly good. If we have a look and see what's happened with the other unit that's down in here, we'll see something a bit different. We now see it's a ten, 
So why is that? We've got the base of two, we've got the shield defense of plus three, but he's now inside the shield wall of the other unit. And so he's now got 10 defense, and so 65% of all physical damage is going to be reduced. So it's, we've got a lot better protection. So there we've got 10 protection. So this is why you don't always have to actually hit another unit, because this unit is now so enhanced, because this one went into its shield wall. This one's got nine, because it went to base two, shield defense of plus three. The shield wall for the unit, making the shield wall is plus two, it's plus three for anyone else inside that shield zone. If we grab this unit and then put a shield wall up again, we then have like shield walls going, you can only be applied the shield wall aspect, but this one now is 12 because we now have the, um, the, the shield defense, as we saw the base two shield defense, uh, the shield wall himself is, gives him plus two and the shield wall from the guy next to him is another plus three. And so he's also tough at plus two. So he now has 72% of all damage coming in is gonna be protected. And so, and this one will now be the same. This will be 12 as well. And so they also get a little bit of extra resistance from by going into the shield wall, by, by, by dedicating the shield wall. And so we now actually have these other units can now start to come through and, uh, and position themselves more effectively. Um, I can move all the way up into there with that one. Um, I can sit in behind. Let's just go and place this one on the flank. This one was the one that came in from the other side. Shield wall there. I think I will set up this one. I can go in, into the center. This one ultimately will do more damage. This one, we've got three bolts from this guy. Although these, if I can get the Sylvan Wolf, it'll work out pretty well. I can go to there as well. So we're just setting up ready for the next attack. Um, I can invite the attack, but I think I'll actually just keep it back. And this one here has got a special ability as well. So it ends its turn and goes into a defensive mode, it extends its zone of control to all adjacent hexes. It's, it gives itself plus two defense, plus two resistance. It's immune to flanking, but all adjacent friendly units gain plus three resistance and plus three status resistance, which is sort of like if there's burning or something like that, it just helps them to stop that, including poisoning, I think. Let's just go and place it in the middle here. So we're inside the shield wall. Now this unit, without even, and it's very important you get the facing right. So facing is a free action. Like you can just basically say, yeah, I'm gonna, I want to face the front. So you can sort of do it that way or you know, this way, whichever way you wanted to do it. I'll just, I'll take it this side. We just have to be careful that we don't get flanking shots, but no one can get close enough to be able to, able to do that. Let's move this one up. Again, that will go into a shield wall area. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that one. Again, we have an undo unless you do an attack. So undo the last unit movement that was made. This is only available if no attacks were triggered, no abilities or spells were used, or the unit was not damaged while moving. So we can move that one back and just leave it where it is. I meant to grab this unit and move that one up. That's now in position. It's also in the shield wall. Now this one here, I'm gonna set this one up to just be defensive mode, which is, um, which is the defense, which means that these guys now have got an extra piece of, um, these have now gone up to 41% protection because their resistance has gone up. So by using this little combination, we're now in enhancing what they can then go and do. You can see how complex it actually can get. It's like there's a lot that can go on. This is where I think the game really shines. It really is quite cool, uh, the way it sort of does work like this. Um, so yeah, we've sort of hit the shield defense, um, we've got plus three defense. So we're, we've got the shield defense next to us. Again, this, this particular unit's got 12 defense now. It's got five resistance. This is the status resistance that we actually have. This is that shield unit that we were looking at before. And so it's now got status resistance. So it reduces the chance that this unit will be affected by negative status effects. And so the current status reduction is 27%, which means that if they use their poison attack on us, we have a little bit of extra protection against that. Not, not much, but a little bit. So we'll just close that one off. So it's gonna be a little bit harder for them to do that. I'm going to move this one. I'm going to move this one around the other. No, I'm going to keep this one close. I'm just thinking because this one has doesn't have the um, the Sylvan Wolf attack. I'll move this one off to the side. Now these are over. This one inside the shield wall. This is the only unit not protected by these guys. Let's end our turn here. So I hope this is making sense. 
So beaches are saying, I'm glad they're adding more cultures and races. Yeah, I, was like, I just I hope that they find a way to make them even more meaningful. Like it's it, because this is where, when you know what's happening in the battles, it's quite engaging. But when you don't, when it's just superficially looking at the icons like archer and shield unit without realizing just how distinctive they actually are, you miss a lot. And uh, they've done a little bit by adding little symbols off to the side. See, 12 damage went through. Yeah, I did manage to select uh, select a string from there. <clears throat> so we didn't take very much damage because of all the shields, walls and stuff. Now, if we have a quick look at the combat log, combat history, we can then sort of see exactly what happens with everything. So why is there grazers? If we have a look at the fury, um, actually look at the slither hatchling. Um, we can see through here uses Magic Blast, that was the Soother, back over through here. Uh, roll to hit, 84, it needed a 35 um, to, uh, like to actually do the full damage. And so it rolled above what it was required. Um, and if you have a look at that one now, if we go and have a look at this and, then, and have a look at it, if we press Control, we can see it's 65 is what it required. Um, and it's, it's a bit backwards the way it shows up in through here. So the roll to hit, is um, you take the 65 minus, like 100 minus 65 is 35. So to um, to miss, we'd have to roll, uh, well, anything over 35 is going to be a hit because we've got 65%, hang on, I'm not making much sense of this. You've got 100%, 100% is always going to hit. So uh, so if there's a 65%, it means that there's a 35% chance of missing. So to be able to get the hit, you need to score over 35 in this instance. And so in this case, they rolled an 84, which means they get the full hit. And so the, protect, the protector sustained uh, sustained uh, 12, uh, 12 damage in through here when you combine all these different attacks going in. We don't have any special protection against one or the other. And so that sort of is why we took that sort of damage coming back in. But you'll see there it says 15 and not 12. So the reason that it actually was 12 and not 15 was because this one did actually have that extra resistance. So the resistance then negate, negated that from 15 to 12. That's what actually happened there. Does that, I hope that makes sense. Uh, the so that that's what so that's what happened with that particular one. Then we have the um, in this case through here. This one had the venomous uh, venomous spit that it had. I can through there and there was a um, I think it aimed for, see uh, it, with this one here. It's only 35% to hit that one, but 75% to hit that one. So what's going on? Just press Control. And you can then see what it is. So 90% is the base, but it's long range, and so minus 15% for that. So we end up with 75%. So why is that working, and but not this one? If we have a bit of a look, we'll see that. Um, and just press Control there again. It's also long range, but it's also 40% because of this obstacle. So this thing's in the way. So it can't get an it can't get an easy shot at this particular unit. So this one here again, it needed, uh, it has to be over 25 to get the hit. It rolled 64, so it did actually get that one. Uh, now the protector then uh, uh, fails the check roll, so it was 64 versus 66. So we, so we actually take poison damage in, in that case. And so this unit is now poisoned. So uh, unit sustains four blight damage each turn and stacks up to five times because we didn't, we didn't get the resistance roll effectively we almost got it um we, we needed to roll more than 66 which again was that resistance that we had set up there before so we didn't quite get it remember how what did we have we had 20 i forget what it was actually whatever it was anyway the resistance resistance we, we missed the resistance and so that's been poisoned now for three for three turns now this one here is an interesting one so the this one here the fury back over through here is now firing at this unit because again there's no line of sight for that one you can see there it's uh, can't actually do anything so there's no line of sight because we're hiding behind this building but it does have a shot at this one here at 65 percent again minus 25 for the long range and so in this case it, it required similar to what it had over through here it requires to get something over 35 but it only uh rolled sorry it shoots it shoots twice the first one, it was it needs 35, it only rolled 13, and the second one it needed a 35 and it only rolled a 30. If you're within 25 of the of the what you require, 
meaning if if we had have scored under 10 it would have missed but it didn't it actually scored it actually did hit um, it still got the hit but it was a, it only a graze so it, it does only half damage and so in this case the protector only sustained two physical damage and uh, and we the fury then gain, gained strengthened for three turns because that's what furies have got they're, they're like level two they're fairly they're fairly good at what they do so in this case we've got the um, uh, where is it? I should have shown it in here somewhere. Um, it'll be in here somewhere. Tenacious, Savage Strike, Frenzy. Yeah, when this unit lands an attack, it gains a stack of strengthen. And so it's now got two of those because it landed two attacks. So it does 10% damage and stacks up to five times. And so it's essentially going to be doing a lot more damage every turn that we let it do this. Uh, so any, I hope that's all making sense. Anyway, it's um, there's a lot that does go on in here. So these guys can now charge in. We can do damage to both of these. These are sort of within range now of, of both. So we'll set things up. Now we can't quite reach the other one. This one here has only got the one the one shot, so I'm happy enough to come charging in with that. Uh, similarly back over here, this one's got three shots, which means I just want to get close enough so at that stage, we're one away from where we need to be. So I'm just going to move this one forward one. And I'll show you, like, we'll move this one in. This gives me three shots, but only at 25, because this one's in foliage. I can get one shot there at 50. Yeah, so 50% there, which means that if I move it to there, I should be OK. Let's, let's do that. Let's move it up. Let's see if that's, yeah, that's 50% which is, I'm happy enough with that shot. We only have two shots at it, but I'll, I'll do it from there. So I'll just move that one up. So that's now in position, ready to actually shoot at it. If I press control, we can see it's obscured by an obstacle, but the obstacle that's obscuring it is actually the obstacle it's standing in. Uh, if we go back to this unit and move forward again, I'll show you how this then changes things. And if we now go and have a look at it, it's now, it's actually still 50 there, that's interesting. It normally would not, it would normally have a problem because of the unit in front. I'm still going to undo that last movement because uh, I also, if I do miss, it can hit anywhere around it. So this is where I'm just going to go and actually have a hit at it. So again, this is an easy one for us to work out. 50% chance to hit it. Uh, we have two shots going in. Each shot should do 14 damage against this particular unit. Uh, we've got, uh, there's a chance to also cause burning if we do get the hit. So there's going to be some other little hits coming back in. Let's have a quick drink. Um, now the 50%, it, that means that we've, if anything over 50 that we roll is going to be a hit. Anything under 25 is going to be a miss. So between 25 and, and 50 is, is a graze. Let's go and hit it. And the second one was a graze. So when we have a look at the actual what was what was rolled, we needed the 50, rolled 87, we're above the 50, fine, we get the full damage. Now, it did pass the check in this case. It needed to roll the 49% the was the chance we had of making it burn. It rolled a 78, and so it didn't burn. So it wasn't actually burning, uh, but it did sustain damage. So, uh, and then we've got the... Um, uh, roll to hit was 41% uh, needed, F uh, 50 was, was what, what was done there, so we only had a graze. It did pass the check, so it did sustain the burning, but it's still burning anyway. And that's because the terrain caught fire. So the terrain has caught fire, which means that it's now caught fire. So even though it managed to avoid the burning, like it actually did pass the check, uh, it's, still, it's still actually burning anyway because the terrain is, is, uh, is flammable. Uh, in this case, we want to sort of we want to close in on these. Um, so this one is actually now on fire, which will actually impact it in different ways. So this was now uh, burning for three turns. It sustains four fire damage each turn and stacks up to five times. Uh, burning counters wet and frozen. Now its overall accuracy, I think, is also impacted by this. I think. Oh no, it's not. Okay, that's okay. Uh, anyway, let's continue on. So now we have these guys. If we uh, if we go forward, I have to move these forward. Now this one's only got the one shot, so I can sort of move anywhere I like. 
got 50 percent in through there they're all 50 so i can sort of do them from any old place put a 90 percent back over here if i go there i'm then in the way of this unit what i want to do is i want to do as the best i possibly can so what i might do is i might move this one across to the other side here you can see there i don't get a shot there because i'm then in, inside the zone of control let's just move this one across to here and then just do the shot try to blind it if we can blind it it can't then use its attack and the blinding went in so again looking at it uh it was a 90 percent so we needed to roll over 10 we rolled a 30. the fury then fails to check it because we had a 90 percent chance of uh, getting blinding on it it rolled an eight it needed to roll over 90 to, for us to for it not to be blinded so it's that sustained damage and it was also then going to blind for one turn so minus 50 percent accuracy on physical range and magic attacks cannot form retaliation attacks uh, and so blind counters true strike so in this case uh, that's all sort of been done um, and the exalted now we we pick up a couple of rising furies on this particular unit this unit can now not go in yet because we've got a few little things we want to be checking so we need to get in close enough with our range units to do some damage now we know that this one is not able to reach that one but it, from there it can so it can just reach it there so let's just move in move that one up then we have 65 percenters in through this other side uh, and again if i move this unit in there's a chance that i think that this will now close it down so that's 65 let's just move this one in and it's still 65. i'll still just keep it back i'm not sure why that's why we're able to do that we shouldn't be able to do that i think i'll close this one into here Check that one, that's 65. Yeah, it's still 65, okay. I'm not sure why we're able to do that. Maybe the blow darts do something. Oh, here we go. Ignore, ignore cover and unit, unit penalties cannot be used. Okay, it's not a, like a normal arrow. So in this case, we can just shoot past our own units uh, to do things. That's what it is. It's the blow darts. It's, it's different to what it normally would be. So we've got 65 there. In that case, I don't have to worry too much about what we're doing. Let's go this way. We missed. So in that case, we needed a um, we needed a 35 minus 25 is we needed a 10. We rolled a five, so we miss, <laughs> which is pretty pretty bad. Two shots here, and a graze, and then a full hit there. And now we actually have this one. I'm going to bring these together. They don't get unless we actually turn on the um, turn on the uh, the shield wall. We don't get the benefit of the shield wall. But I still want to just do some damage. What I could do here is because I can't get the kill. Just face it. This facing is so important in this game. I'm just going to go and I'm not going to be able to do anything here. So what I might as well do. I can't even even just doing the damage here is not going to do too much. So I'm going to actually put this one into shield wall mode because that will then protect this unit. This is why I wanted them both to working together. Uh, this unit will actually then march away and you can see when it does that there's a bright red area because it's in the zone of control. So I can't actually, I can't easily get away. Um, uh, it also is, is inaccurate anyway, so it really can't do much. This one here, there is a retaliation. These are very, very even. I think I'm going to put shield wall on again. I'm assuming this one will keep up, keep the attack going. It won't like to have the free hits. So let's just get both of those with shield ball. So these both go back up to 12 again. They didn't do the shots, but the retaliation wise, they're going to be fairly good if they if they attack us. We do have spells. Um, yeah, we don't. Both of these are healing spells, which we don't need. Don't need. Okay, so we'll end our turn there. Oh, I forgot to move that one. That's a big mistake. Oh, that's got an ability to, to bypass. It's going to move away. So I'm, I screwed that one up because I didn't close the gap over there. All right, well, let's uh, smash this one.
close this one in. And now we will attack. These have taken a lot of damage. Now, if there was foliage, and there's not, but if there was, we'd be able to use this to consume flora and eat uh, and eat some flora to actually then get some healing. I'll take this shot. grazes which isn't great I do have a special ability here disengaging shot um, which I'll take so I can move in it's a special ability that we have using the blow darts you can move in and then actually smack it and jump back now rising fury has gone to four not far enough we can kill that unit off, but I think I want to do more damage to this one here and blind this one and sort of lock it in. So it's going to come after this, this particular unit. So I can actually go, it's only 50% no matter where I go, including back there. I only want to blind it more than anything. Only a graze, but we still have the blinding. So that's good. Um, have a bit of a look and see what actually happened there with that one. Yeah, so it rolled 81. It almost got enough to resist the blinding. Now we've got two actions there. I do have one action there. It's blind, so it can't retaliate. So I'm going to run this one around to here because I know that this one can run in and get two shots against that one. shots from here good and we'll use the healing roots which is actually that's only 10 that's 15 oh, I've, got right, I've got a right click sorry Poison removed, regeneration as well. Uh, let's just end our turn here. It's got Draconic Rage. It did move away effectively, it will have another shot. I need a graze though. I'll turn off the combat history, it's sort of, you, we've now explained what's going on with that. So again, we have this little indicator to sort of give us a bit of a rundown as to what's going on. In fact, that one burnt and, and got killed. So it is just a slither now. I've got Fury. I'm not going to get a chance to use this, unfortunately. Actually, I think it just attacks when we go in. Let's get the kill. All right, there we go. Um, okay, so that we've now taken this particular one. We'll just close this one off. Okay, we've got a warming band, and we also picked up a bit of production from this location. So Warming Band is a tier 3 ring, actually. It does grant us with Frost Resistance, Fire Resistance, and Blight Resistance, which is pretty cool. So I'll open the Hero screen and give this one across. Oops, hang on. Oh, it goes into the ring slot. That's it. Confirm. And close. That's good. A bit of loot. More production. So that'll just help us with uh, building back in through here. Now we've got a hundred, which means we can now do get the water 
the, the water aspects if we wanted to. So if we go into the, the ruler is now leveled up as well, which is good. The thing I like to do here, there is actually a mod uh, that was mentioned earlier uh, where you've actually got like different classes, but it doesn't work yet with the DLC. It, like it, this is still just a, um, um, you know, basically showing it, showing it off. But there is a, um, like, you know, it's not, not released yet. I'm sure that mod will be, will be upgraded for this fairly soon. Now what we want to do is we want to go to support. So inspiring leader, uh, while army leader, all non-hero units in the army have minus 20% up, unit upkeep, which makes things a lot cheaper. So we're going to start there and confirm that one. It just means that we can then support the army. Uh, so she's in a good position. These guys are a, bit in, a little bit injured. The orders in through here. We'll just come back out. Actually, before we do that, um, what we might do is... This one here, I'm pretty sure we can. Net, oh, we still can't get it, we're still a little way off. It is 100 Imperium, but we're still a turn away, are we? Two turns away. Close that one off. There's really nothing much else in this, in this area we can go for. We do want to claim this one as well. Actually, that's right, we went with magical materials. Tranquility pool. Get extra knowledge. So we'll cast poison arrows for our blow darters. It's going to drain a little bit of our mana away. Now this is where I think. It must be, I think it's only the major transformations. I think we can then change the colours, the colour schemes that we sort of see. We have another province now. This is uh, newish. It's been around for a little while, but we can now sort of build dredger quarries and stuff like this, and fish farms. So we've got a bit more, a bit more choice. We are going to get this one ultimately. So I'll grab a, um, a conduit to get more mana. or do we want gold? I think we want that actually. What do we have here? That's just the scout. I want this to heal up before we go and do the attack. something out this way. There's another pirate den back over this other side as well. And then we'll get on the water with the scout. We might get another scout as well actually. Might just do that now. Build the structure. Uh, storehouse is going to give me more growth. And then the, this one gives me a bit of everything, really. Draft production and food income. So let's get the woodcarvers workshop. Stone down, produce the temple. Now this is a bit more tricky than what we saw there before. Might just wait for this one to heal up completely, so let's just leave them where they are. Let's make sure there's nothing hidden in there. That's a knowledge stash. And we should be able to come back in. Yeah, we can now get this one here. So basic seafaring. Uh, so we can now uh, allows us to embark on vehicles. can't do just yet. These can. But we'll clear this out first. Yeah, I shouldn't have moved that one off. I would have been able to get into the water.
See you, Matthew. See you later. Uh, Raven Cohen saying, can you edit units uh, to give them better or different gear like you could in Planet Fall? No, not the actual base units, only the heroes. The heroes are fully customizable, but not the, the base units you end up with spells. So you use spells to sort of like what we just did there before. So these units in through here now. Uh, so what, 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 the way we do it is we apply uh, we apply effects. So you can sort of see there we've got um, unit enchantment upkeep is minus four mana. That, uh, that upkeep is coming from the spell that we had cast, of, not on this unit, on this unit here. And so these, this one through, 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 through here has got poison arrows. So this is sort of like the mods that we had before, but we have to do this through the magic system, not through um, not through actually building this, the system itself. And so the um, this is uh, the poison arrow. So it just gives them a, a more damage uh, and a chance to inflict poisoned. So that's sort of how you then so. You, and they come through the tome system, which we'll be getting fairly soon. We'll, we'll have another choice for where we then go with the tomes. So we'll have a look at that just in a minute. So there's a, it's got different systems, basically. Yeah, we'll close that one. Um, can annex another province. So we can move this one down. We do actually have... Now, what's this one here? This is actually a uh, pearl reef which gives us a lot actually. So it doesn't matter what I build on there, like if I go and build a dredger quarry, so we end up, uh, now that this is also occupied, we will have to go and, and uh, clean out whatever's actually protecting this. Um, I haven't done it yet, have I? Or did I just do it? Yeah, so I can still grab, still grab this. So I can either do it that way and get seven, uh, sorry, five food, or the production. Now we do have to clean it out. It may be a bit tricky, more tricky than we think. I think I'm better off just getting something from in here, like either. Grabbing, we've got the iron deposit. I can sort of just get like a um, a quarry, a quarry through there. Um, yeah, let's actually let's go and get more gold. Actually, no, we'll get more more uh, construction. We'll get we'll get the quarry, and then we'll get a mine back over there. All right, so these should now be ready to go. So we can now just attack this one. Again, this is a low risk battle. So um, I'll, I might just wait until we've got this one on the water. The pathing here has always been a problem. They're not going to be able to fix this either, by the way. I did actually, I've been reporting this one for a long time, but, they, um, but they've said that no, it's, it's, it's buried somewhere in the code, uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't know how to, like if I t tell it to go to there, which it technically can, it doesn't know that it, c it has to move to there first. So. I would have thought that would have been something that they would have been able to fix, but anyway, it's not something I can fix. Let's just do that, though. Let's now embark. Now, this is the top corner of the map, so we'll have a bit of a look at the map and see what else is in around there. It's still early days. There won't be much up there, but there may be some loot up there or somewhere. Let's see what we can find. And so I might just do an auto battle here and just see if, if I'm happy with the results. Yeah, in that case, I'm actually happy enough with what happened there. Everyone went up a level. Uh, it didn't take too much damage. So we'll just close that one off. Assassin's Dagger. Just flanker. We don't really need it ourselves. But we'll still pop it on until we pick up another hero. Close that one. It's going to give us a quick stab. That's something we can then go and do. Now, we've, again, we've got a bit of healing we need to do. So let's just now move down in towards this area. And let these heal up. Yeah, so we've now got the Tranquility Pool. This is now inside our territory. And so we're now going to be getting 20 knowledge, 20 extra knowledge. 
Um, yeah, the, the, the different magic materials. Now, any ore is found underground now. It used to be that you could find them anywhere, but now they can only be found underground. And then the other ones are found above ground. So that's sort of the way it works. Uh, people find the nervous saying it, it seems I won't have to step away after all. Uh, more test tactic, yeah. I'll be going soonish, probably in about half an hour or so, I think. I heard the ocean isn't, isn't generated in the same way as land was, which is also why they said it was impossible to terraform ocean tiles. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not sure. I haven't, haven't looked into that at all. That's interesting, though. I didn't, I didn't realise that. Because you only do basic terraforming. Wine prison. So in five living vine units randomly into two hex radius, which live for two, uh, two turns. Uh, that's a combat spell. That could be useful, ultimately. The blight br blades work in well with the other. So if we have a look at this one through here, uh, these will affect skirmishers, pole arms, shock units, and shield units. We've got three of those in our army. The upkeep is going to be two, I think. Um, to bring that one through. It does, if we can get poisoned units, uh, we're going to get plus 20% damage. So we'll take that one as well. And we'll grab that. Keep that one where that is. Keep that one where that is as well. All right, the primal dispute. So we've got uh, defeat or form an alliance with Serena or defeat or form an alliance with Nimu. Actually, we have to do both. So soon after meeting uh, life, uh, life goddess Serena, she contacts you, nature's blessing. She starts, before she can finish her, her greeting, she's interrupted by the siren goddess Nimu. Immediately, the two goddesses start bickering. The blessings of nature affinity should be uh, protected, not twisted and, and devolved, Serena sneers. All who threaten my domain will be exterminated, even mad goddesses like Nimu. Nimu scoffs. My um, stormborn will flood your precious forest. Only the uh, only the strongest survive. The tide and, f and for that we must adapt. Allow me to demonstrate, Serena. So you find yourself between two godia who fight over nature's domains. With whom do you side? Um, what do we get with this one here? Now Nimu is not really who we want to be um, going for. I don't think. Yeah, she's Stormborn. These are Nagas, so she's got Nagas. Whereas the other one is more, uh, look, that's Goatkin. This one is, is the Elves. These are Fey Touched, Minor Transformation. I wonder what that does. This is new, I think. Makes the target race connected with the Fey powers, granting them Fey Ghoul. Uh, the uh, ability to ignore, um, so the vision penalties from Misty and accuracy penalties from Clinging Mist. Um, I don't know who should we go. Which should we go for? I'm sort of tempted to go with Nimu. I just think she's going to be more of a threat, to be honest. So I might just go that way. I think. Um, so again, this is just where we are. So your claim province has been captured. So she's close. Serena's captured one of your claim provinces because your claims now have a grievance against Serena. Okay. So we'll say goodbye. And there's Nimu, who is fairly happy with us. <clears throat> so we'll just say goodbye there. Aha. In the outpost. I wanted to go there, actually. Well, there's a big landmass over here, and there's another island there. I think we'll go to this landmass. This one is getting bigger and bigger. Still early days yet. Okay, these are, these are lesser tide spirits, which would be tricky for us to fight. Do shoot a bow. This one can actually move. We can start the fight with this one if we wanted to. Let's just do a uh, quick save. I don't know if I want to do this or not. It says that we've got an easy fight. 
I'll just try an auto combat and see how we go. I don't think it's going to be as easy as we think. Yeah, no, we lost. We lost this primal data. I think we can do better than that. So we'll retry the, the combat. But these are going to be tricky. Storm or Tide? Yes, no, Tide Spirits, okay. So they've got it like a water attack. So we've got a melee strike, which also inflicts wet when they when they strike. So what we need to do is they can move to there or there. Um, so let's just get position ready to go. And again, we can just essentially just go into like places like this. So again, we don't want to move to there. Or well, maybe we do. There's rocks there. Oops, that's still okay. We don't have any other spells really that are going to do too much. Uh, we can have a look and see if, there's, if, if they've got any bonuses. Yeah, they've got resistance against Blight, unfortunately, because we've now, we've now embraced Blight, so they take less damage. They're susceptible to shock. They also are good against fire. So the two, the two attacks we have, fire and, um, and Blight, these things are resistant to. So the shield walls will go up. Fire resistance is um, making it very, very weak. This one does then open things up a bit. Um, yeah, that one's going to have to protect this one, I think. This one does have the obscuring. We're obscured by our own unit in this case. I should have fired at that one. First, so I can still do it. So now I actually have a um, like 100% to actually hit that one. So I'll take this with the ranged attack. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. 90%. Yep. So we just take that one rather than firing through the units. We can fire at the top if it's right in front of us. Now, if I move forward, uh, it technically opens it up for them. So let's just keep that one back a little bit. Now, this thing will come through the other side. Yes, yeah, so we don't have an attack there, no line of sight through there, but we will if we move to there. so there's no retaliation which means we can smack it so I can kill it it does open this one up to a bit of a damage though coming back in the other way it's a 12 I still I think I'll still get rid of it, it does open all this one right up actually maybe no maybe I won't maybe I won't I think I'll just Position this one in here. 
Let's look at the archery. 65%. I've got 90% there with two shots. That's enough to kill it. Oh, wow. Two really bad shots. Two grazes. Now, that means that we scored under 10 in two rolls. If we have a look at that. So we need a 10, we rolled a 6, then we rolled an 8. <laughs> so, yes, the RNG is a thing in the game. Which is uh, frustrating. Anyway, we haven't taken any damage yet. We've killed off one of them, but we haven't, we've now just got to work our way through. So we'll end our turn. Actually, who can still have a go? This one. Just block that one in. Sort of obliged to, to go up against those defenders because of the way we've positioned everything. We sort of got them locked in. Um, how should, yeah, was this going to go? Yeah, we can do big damage in here. We do flank it. Even though it's immune to poison, we still do a lot of physical damage to this. Just make sure we get the best bang for buck. Yeah, so I can kill this one off with a flanking attack. I can also come into there with a flanking attack, but I'll start here. It's gone. Just leaves the one unit back over there. It's 50%, it's 90% there, so I'll take the 90%. Now I can do more damage to it than what we receive, but I'm going to put it back into shield wall. Just with the protection that we end up having. And it's been blinded. Which means I get free shots in here, so I'll take that. Up to four there, that's good. Does a little bit of damage. Not much. There we go. Fury of the Sylvan Wolf. So we now got this one here. So um, yeah, Fury of the Sylvan Wolf. Both we then do spirit damage now with the next attack that we do. We've got three shots, but we are defending. But the shield units are fairly good. You don't have to be fighting with these to do well. Anyway, now it's the Fury of the Sylvan Wolf. It's fumbling because it's unhappy. So this is the other thing we didn't talk about before. So there is actually a morale aspect, which is this one through here. So as the thing sort of uh, hit in, so hit points represent the amount of damage a unit can take before it dies. Except, sorry, that's hit points there. Morale, this is the morale. So it's taken uh, minus 15 from your turn. Too many allies died. So it's it's losing morale because of the uh, because of the allies that are, that are being smashed into there. Let's go and kill this thing. Good. A critical hit there, which actually killed it in the end. That was good. So we didn't lose that unit after all. Close that one. And again, we'll just go and level up. So we've got now experience leader. This will, this will actually, um, sorry, I should have shown that one. Um, just cancel. I like to get this one pretty early. It gives plus two experience every single turn to everyone in the army. Um, 
we've got other things like spiritual healing and stuff like that which we can use strength training but the experienced leader is a good one early so I'm just going to go and confirm that one as well as a support unit uh, trait so we'll close that one off and we now actually control this so if we, if we claim this one we, we end up with a lot more mana a lot more gold which is a good one now this one is still looks like it's actually still um, fast asleep now we can see there that there's um, it's not too strong yeah I wish we had this one what is required I don't think there's anything else this else that this way yep now we can see everything there I don't want to sit inside it because that uh, will then wake it up. I can pass through it. Actually, you can pass around the back of it. No, I can't. I can't get into those. So I don't want to sit, end up in here. So I'm just going to leave that one where that is. And there may be hidden units in there, for all we know. Woodcarver's workshop. That's good. Two more turns, we get another level up, which means we can get another spot. Um, produce merchandise. We don't want that, of course. Shrine is going to give me more mana. I do need more mana. Uh, the clay, this one here is boosted now as well. I think we might grab that one. So we can go to the next level of the, of the city. And we should really get the stone, this uh, wolf temple as well. Oh, there's a few others. I'll, I'll leave them the others where they are. Okay, let's leave that one where that is. <clears throat> Leave that one there. We can just go back home again. Okay, she actually succeeded. Um, Pact of Cooperation. So the free cities open to its border. Trading is enabled. Up to two resource trades are available. Um, this is uh, good. So we've just gone over the next level with these uh, halflings. So um, yes, yeah, so we can now trade uh, magic materials, etc., etc. Now we don't know what they've got. Just go good news. News proceed. They they normally do have something. This is focus crystals. Okay, that would be good to get. Now, so they want um, to we're at peace at the moment. Empire relations are getting worse. We do have a war justification against them if we wanted to. So you think befriending uh, Fargosk Far will help secure your path to victory? It'll be my empire that rises above all, says uh, Serena. Um, we will say goodbye. All right. Now it's turn 10, so we end up getting one hero that we can now go and, and grab. So we've got a couple of little engineers that we could actually sort of go and, and pick up if we wanted to. Let's have a look and see what else we've got. So these are level three. Level one, we can then go into um, Nano the, the Prophet. And so these have got like other abilities. We'll have a look at each of these one after the turn. So we can increase the hero cap artificially by, by investing in it, which we don't want to do just yet. That will change over time. And I've got a Chaos Adapt in through here. Let's have a look at these guys. So that is, um, where is it? Chaos Adept is... Why does it show that one? It should actually show it in here, I thought, too. Um, not sure where that is. I'll just go back. So Chaos Adept, this unit has uh, three Chaos Affinity. When governing a city, this empire um, gains plus two Chaos Affinity as well. So, um... Yeah, so that's actually that, that would actually add a lot to chaos, which actually isn't terrible. Oops, hang on. Let's go back. The next one is got uh, distracting. <clears throat> so attack, uh, attacks have a base sixty percent chance of inflicting distracted. Again, not a bad one to get. This one's a druid. So um, 
Well, Army Leader, animal and plant units in the Army have uh, plus 20 uh, hit points and, and minus 20% unit upkeep. Again, that would be useful as well. We could actually go that way. I think I might head that. I think at this stage, this one is, is going to ultimately be good for the long term. And then we've got, because we can actually go th into the different tomes of magic to make good use of this one. And then we have uh, the, this is um, a Phagacetia Yob. And this, these are both, uh, looks like they're brother and sister. Um, so this one is a Hero of the Meek. And so when Army Leader, all Tier 1 units in the Army gain plus 10 hit points, plus 1 defense, plus 1 resistance, which again isn't bad. She starts on level 3, which isn't terrible. And then we've got the um, this next lot of guys as well. So Rungo Yob is unyielding. So Berserker Rage, when this unit's total hit points reach 33% or lower, it becomes Berserk for one turn, which allows it to sort of then gain a whole lot of other different abilities. New to morale effects, damage penalties from casualties are negated. All right, so it's sort of only for one turn, but I don't think we'll go that way. I think Druid, ultimately for the long game, I think we'll go and claim this one. So we'll recruit for 150. Uh, yep, so we've got a lot of a lot of uh, up through here as well. Um, okay, in this case, we'll move this one down and have it join up with our group. I can't get into the water in one. Let's start to grab other other uh, units as well. Just queue a, few, a couple of these up. We don't want to get too many. I do want to be part of this one, so I'm going to move. Uh, I'm going to move this one back onto the land, just to heal up. And then, because we've still got a couple of turns anyway, let's go over and make friends with this one. That is Serena herself. Okay, so Elder Nika Stoneroot of the Free City of Bushgrove acknowledges that you're the ancestral greeting of the Horn Spirit Caller. So this is the same as us. Um, so they will be friendlier, quicker. And so uh, give uh, one of your Whispering Stones. Now we only have one. I don't think we can get another one just at this stage. We'll have a look and see. Um, hold the meeting with your kin. Yeah, we'll just, we will go that way. Let's have a look and see what we can get. We can do the digging underground. The next, um, the next one we get is in here, which is in 10 turns. Um, another Whispering Stone there, which is not available to us. Actually, it is available, but that's going to take uh, 30 turns <laughs> with that one. We do have this one as well. Farms Grant plus five food. We've only got one of them. I don't think I'll waste the Imperium just yet on that. So we'll just keep that one there. And um, this one is certainly going to be, it's going to be better off. We're going to be better off with this one than the other one. Let's just go and um, go underground again. Now the others haven't met them yet. Pact of Loyalty in 10. It's going to take a while. I think we'll switch. We we'll just have to keep on looking at them until we can get the other Whispering Stone. Yeah, so we'll leave that one there. Just toggle back. So we'll give the Whispering Stone in here. This will then boost this much, much faster. So we'll end up with this one under our control. Ground, that's okay. If they've got a red banner, it means that they're wandering. So anything with a black banner is not a, not a danger to us. It means it's a guard unit. Let's keep that one there. A little bit of damage, but we'll be okay. 
just leave it where we are and then we'll go after the pirate cove. Again, we can just sort of see what, if the pirate cove has got anything we have to be concerned about. No, there's nothing hidden in there. So these are fairly weak at the moment. They'll, they will get stronger. What's that one? That's a, a large pickup. Let's go for that one. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Alright, so we just picked up a whole lot of loot. See anything much else in through here? There's some protection there. Light blades. Okay, there we go. Select new research. Uh, we have uh, Wolf Primal Communion. So this one allows non uh, non uh, racial units to actually end up with the Sylvan Wolf Spoon. We can conjure the Primal Wolf. Um, it's it's a, it's a combat unit, combat spell. I might still grab. I might grab this one. I think. Actually, no. This one here, I think, would be the better way to, for us to go. Evil presence. Do you want to clear all this, these things out? Just saying, gotta got run. We'll watch the rest of the stream later tonight. No, no worries at all. Thanks for uh, hanging around. Get the blight blades uh, under control. So start to sort of uh, upgrade our units. Now we wanted to get this one, so we're just going to go and get. Um, I think the fish farm. I think I'll get the quarry again. Dredge a quarry. Small monster den, that's not too bad. Now we can't go through the other territory, so we'll just go around. Now disembarked. Okay, so into the water. And again, just a bit of healing. So I'll just keep these here. They've just got a little bit of healing to go in, in there. Scouting through the water. Another wreck over through here. More land over that way. Some reefs. So surrenders on our territory. Yep, so she's now declared a rivalry with us. So we're going to be at war with her. Quite soon, I would, I would imagine. Well, I think in that case, she's also got the, uh, the same totem that we've got. So grab the Blight Blades for these guys, and we'll enchant. This is going to then chew up a bit more of our mana. the new empire skill developed uh, available uh, this one here is um, natural recovery so uh, your units regenerate an additional plus 15 hit points per turn in friendly domain this would actually speed things up quite nicely but I'm not going to spend it just yet we've only got 280 and I don't want to I want to keep hold of it for the, I want to get the other um, whispering stone and uh, possibly even get another hero but uh, I'm pretty happy with where we are so let's go for this thing do an auto, I'll just do a quick save, but this one should be fairly easy for us. Again, if we lose any units, we'll, we'll win the it properly. Nope, we're okay. We did take a bit of damage, but that's that all worked out okay. So we'll close that one. And we got a true seeing signet. So this one gives us plus four blight resistance. And true sight can see uh, invisible or camouflage units within its vision range. An inspiring killer. This unit grants double the morale damage 
to its allies when killing an enemy. There we go. That's pretty cool. We'll open the hero screen. Uh, I might give that to. I might keep that one with this hero, actually. Oh, it's actually a ring. Um, no, I'll unequip. I'll keep this one here with, that we've got the warming band. I'll keep that one with this unit. In that case, we'll go to the next uh, next hero. There we go. So it takes this um, this signet ring in through here. Confirm that one. And then close. Okay, so we've cleared out that infestation. We'll have to go around to the other side and clear out this other infestation as well. The fastest way is across land. Cross country. We'll stay inside our territory. This will then heal us up faster. Stone walls, the uh, sorry, the um, the next level of, of town. So we have the shipyard. So this is a city structure. Use gold to buy units and city structures. So we can get the um, unlocks the fishmonger, um, which ultimately is going to give us more food income. That's not bad actually. The shipyard get extra gold income as well. The shrine. Yeah, getting, getting extra mana would be useful as well. We might go that way. We also have this one as well. This is a, um, gives us the Masonic Hall. We also have a few other little things as well. Wizard Tower Foundation, we're going to get more Imperium. That's going to be very important to us. So we might go that way as well. Just get a couple of those. Primal Data is coming. We should now be able to build more units. We've now got the Animist. He does this. We've got a bit too many of these, but we can do the Summon Primal Wolf in through here as well. And then we've got the Primal Charger, which would be handy to have one of these in this in the stack. Um, yeah, I might grab one of those, I think. That'll do us. Now look at the time guys, I will have to make a move here, so um, I think we'll leave this here and then I will be back again. I'll, I'll keep on playing this, this series, I think I'll play, keep on playing this series. Just was, um, damn, she's absolutely everywhere. Oh, is that, no, that's Nimue. Okay, that's Nimue down there. Alright, so she's very close, so she's building out posts. They're, they're building up and we're not able to. Second cove in there, that'll be a bit more powerful. Okay, so we've got Magistrate Adrian Dornsinger of the Free City of Dawnsong, and then let's use an elegant curtsy. He's a rat, a ratlings. Wow, it's a big city that they've got. We'll leave that alone. Actually, it's already, you can see there that um, Nimue is already sort of moving ahead there. It's a very, very small map, just one versus one. So, um, uh, seems I won't have to. Yes, they should did that one before. Um, so, uh, so Spiraling saying, "Hey Daz, uh, I, know, I know you love this game. How is the new DLC? The DLC is great, and the free update as well. The Wolf update is also incredibly good. That's as that's as good as a DLC. I've got to say, just all the extra stuff that comes with that. So, you get two two really really good additions tomorrow. So, um, there's a lot coming. So, what have we got? What 15 hours? Uh, what about 12, 13, 14? Yeah, nearly 15 and a half hours, and then you'll uh, then both will be available. So one's a free update, one's the DLC. Both really, really great with what they do bring. Um, yeah, I'm sort of you know I'm, like we've covered the basics here. I, I sort of almost wonder whether we whether we don't switch to something a bit more unusual tomorrow. Um, but I'll, I'll have a think about it. I will also be streaming this on my Twitch channel, so I'll, I'll probably pick something different to do there. Maybe I'll continue this one. It's just it feels a bit limited with what we've got. I like it, but it just feels a little bit... I wish we had more players than what we actually have. But maybe maybe that's still okay. Um, these are uh, the different locations, I guess, that we have to the, um, we have to sort of take over. That'll be the, uh, the headquarters of both of those. Anyway, I will leave it there, guys. So thanks for watching, and I'll uh, catch you tomorrow.